Good morning and welcome to today's live show. If you're not tuning in live, make sure to look at the last 15 minutes where we'll give a little breakdown of every stock that we do cover on this channel. Now, today we are going to get into a lot of stuff. We had Netflix earnings. We had some scares in the Middle East that really caused some funky business to happen. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Some crazy stuff happening here. Um, you want to talk about maybe some market manipulation, but also people might have had buy orders um, underneath that. 20 week moving average. So right now the market does not want to lose the 20 week moving average. If we pull up the weekly here, you're going to see us go way below it. Now we're closing back or, or trying to pull back above it, which just leads us to believe, hey, the bulls are stepping in at this point. Even though the bears are in control on the shorter time frames, boom, look at that buying back up in the night. I think it was down almost 2% here. Um, you can see a similar thing down here on the um, SPY. So the S&P 500 bouncing pretty good from this level. We're about to open up even um, a little bit down on the on the open here if we open up in about 13 minutes down a little bit but um, look at that pre that buying pressure coming up so now we have to see if there's any kind of rollovers or anything like that early on today because if we look at these little time frames you know 30 minute time frames for the uh, futures here but right now this is nothing to worry about this pullback here you just want to see does that bearish sentiment come in early on in the day maybe cross below this level we could see some downside so going forward it's just a of a, a, some interesting behavior so i think the best thing we can do today is just try to almost ignore it and pay attention to the signals that we're seeing right now and this is showing you that we can bounce from this weekly expected move and if we see a rollover we cut below this low we just keep our stops here in case any of that funny business starts to happen now would this convince me to take a position to the downside here most likely not i'm still looking for some kind of bounce back to get into another short position i've already taken profit on most of mine so uh right now i can look at my other plays going forward but i just wanted to say good morning to you guys we're going to start going over a few things um let me see why is this Figure out. We'll have to figure that out some other time. Got to get better at streaming on YouTube because uh, I, didn't, I just have used Twitch for so long. Then bounced all the way back. So right now we're all the way back up. Now the queue is actually dropping off a little bit here. So I wanted to make. Um, some kind of it looks like we're still selling down kind of trying to taper off we'll have to see what happens with that but my goodness uh this thing dropping down again uh maybe you're looking for some kind of small five minute divergence for that bounce right see some kind of little five minute but as we do keep heading down here you have to be a little bit worried going forward and thank you guys for smashing the like button i see that heart moving so thank you thank you thank you uh, I can't really suggest anything at this point. You know, we have craziness overnight. We have this possibly just rolling over going negative here. So I'm not going to, you know, it's one of those days where you could sit on the sidelines and just be like, OK, let me just see if uh, if something builds up by the end of the day and then maybe you can take a position. But uh, overall, I would just be very sketched out over the weekend. I most likely will sell out of a lot of my stuff today and just not really play anything over the weekend just because if something were to happen right we had an attack on we had israel attacking iran okay cool now what do we know happens from there well there were threats of uh turning the nuclear factories um into bomb factories pretty much so right now they're using them for energy they're saying they're going to turn them into a bomb factory type thing if israel attacks iran and that's exactly what's happening now. So you have to think, are they actually going to make that move? And is Russia going to back them up like they said? So the fact that there's a lot of that going on and you don't know, um, it's kind of like, maybe I want to stay out of this for a moment. Because here's the thing. If we did get a reaction, say, up and you miss out on it, right? You miss out on this move. Well, you're going to most likely get consolidation and then get a breakout above this level here if that's going to continue to be bullish and you can be in that trade. OK, but who's to say that's actually going to happen? I mean, the chart looks like that, but with everything going on, uh, you know, even last night with the selling and with, you know, everything that's happening overseas, you could easily just open up one day and be down here. We're very lucky this was bought back. Think if you were long on this. I mean, if you're short, you're probably pissed. But if you're long on this, we actually went down to 
a level of like 493 and then bounced all the way back. That is a huge bounce. That is a big V-shaped recovery, right? So that would tell me, well, this could happen again. And what if we don't buy back? Now, as of right now, you have to say that is buying pressure. So there may be some upside. So if we can curl up early on in the day and see a strong move, okay, maybe even get above this daily expected move and see something crazy happen. I think that would be good. Uh, but I would say if that happened, I'd be a little weary up in this zone up here. So overall with the SPY, I'm just like, you know, it, it seems like a good day to just be like, hey, why don't I just get out of everything and just watch the fireworks and then wait for structure in the future, wait for an easy, easy trade. That's what I would be thinking. Is this thing slow today? It's slow today. What about gold and silver? Gold looks like it needs some kind of pullback. Um, gold actually did not. I was paying attention to the futures. Gold did. It saw like a spike up with that news. It saw like a spike up like to here and then faded. Um, so the gold futures kind of given you a spike and then it immediately dropped off. So right now I'm paying attention to the signals I see in front of me. I think that's the best thing I can do. And I have some two hour divergences across the way here for um, gold. But I, I could show you guys the futures real quick. So this here is what I'm talking about. We saw this initial big spike of about what what percentage was that? 1.26 percent, and then that was all faded. As of right now, you're still close to negative territory. You actually created a divergence there. So the momentum here is weak. If this starts to lose this level, we actually could see gold go down, which is very interesting. Oil as well, getting a spike up, but immediately backing off. Immediately backing off. This is just interesting behavior. It's like when I went to sleep or something like that, uh, when I was about to go to bed, this thing was spiking. And then I looked right before I went to bed and it was all the way back down. So kind of a sketchy time. Thanks for small place today, but 90% of the account is sitting it out unless they set up to Vels like alike. EOD um, might consider a straddle over the weekend, but nobody wins trying to time the market yet. And I think that's probably the best way to go about it. If you are going to trade this market, Use little amounts. I mean, we're seeing things that could be bullish. I'm not going to, you know, shy away from that. You know, the VIX is actually positive right now, but what's it doing? It's creating a steep divergence at the same time as the SPY. The SPY creating a bunch of 30 minute divergences or 15 minute divergences all along here. So at a point where the two hour could cross, the VIX is telling you the momentum to the upside for the volatility is kind of down it, or not down. It's it could reverse down into a negative trend. So that just tells me, OK, maybe I should be cautious, you know, trying to short at this position. Maybe if I see some kind of bounce and then I see volatility turn back up and I see the Vic or the spy roll over on a 30 minute again, I can get into it. But as of right now, it's like as far as today goes, do you really want to be banking on this divergence down here, not playing out? That's what I would kind of get at. You're still in this area here. We can if we kind of ignore the geopolitics, we would say, hey. 68% chance we land in this zone. Uh, we have triple divergence down here on the MACD, on the RSI at the same time. So interesting behavior, but what if we just play the signals today and see how it works out? So if you are going to do that and play these signals, well, then I would probably put a stop right in this area. I really would. I'd probably put a stop this tight. You see a move down. Don't play around with it. See the queues already dropping down. So this is already dropping. Now, I wonder if Netflix has anything to do with that. If you guys know, last night I actually gave you the range for Netflix. And I'm going to pull up a two hour and it's just funny because you, you can't even see it still. The range is on here. Isn't that funny? The range is actually on here. So you can't see it yet. You can't see it yet. You can't see it yet. You can't. There it is. So 543 is the overall daily expected move. Uh, for Netflix, you notice the upside was potentially 677, but um, downside looking very likely at this point. We're coming down into an area where we could bounce, though. This area right here, we have gap support coming in. So if we had a little bit lower, 543, 31 is what I would be paying attention to going forward. I think I, I saw NVIDIA was actually going green for a little bit early on. This one will be interesting. Um, everything will be interesting on the shorter time frames because it all looks so wonky. Uh, even AMD, you know, breaking down meta. Let's see what this guy's doing. It's actually trying to make an upward move. Microsoft downward move again, not getting any kind of bounce. Google dropping off. So 
we're seeing some some weird stuff around, but you have to say, um, if we just pay attention to our signals, if this rejects, well, then I know not even to take the position, right? I'm not even taking this position until it confirms. It confirms some kind of upside momentum, some kind of upside momentum, then that goes positive. I can be confident in it. So, you know, when it crosses, I can get in. When it goes positive, I can be confident. And then maybe we do something like this. Maybe we do something like this. But as of right now, you have to be open to the downside. So you want to wait for those confirmations. Base Ripper coming later today to screw the put holders. And people are very, very, I mean, it'd be interesting to see like PCC and stuff like that when it opens up to see how many people are piling in shorts now. I think the market makers did a perfect job at making a lot of people lose money on the ES. That's what I think. Do I think that's, do you think the correction is over? <laughs> Here's the thing. These are, these are the type of signals you see when a correction is about to bounce, but these aren't the signals that you see when a correction is over. Okay, so, so a good example of this would be back when we traded Apple which we only have three minutes till open, so we're going to do this pretty quick. When we traded Apple, the reason we were convinced that this correction was over was because we got some daily divergences. We got some two-hour divergences. Corrections can take some time. Okay, so the reason that this is actually a very sturdy, like you can definitely call this as the correction is over, is because you have triple divergence that went positive. And then you also had two hour divergence here, two hour divergence here, two hour divergence, almost a two hour divergence here. I think it was like a, a 30 minute with a one hour, but two hour didn't really have it there. But the daily side, you can see three points here, which I know it's a little laggy and I'm sorry about that. But this here is what you more want to see stuff like this for that to really base out. If you really think about it, when we look at the spy and we go back to that point, we saw this is where Apple had that divergence, right? So we had a small divergence, a small flatness of the RSI and MACD at the same time. Boom, that based us out. So overall, you would say, is this correction over? Well, have we even gotten a bounce yet to see if that's the truth? If we get a bounce, that would be very telling. If we get a bounce like this on the two hour, we go up, 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 and then we see that fall again, then we'd kind of know, okay, maybe this area with this two hour divergence has potential. That's what I would say as a momentum trader, now, if we are going to see this go higher, I'm going to see this daily cross up into positive territory, right? I think this daily will cross up into positive territory, and I'm not going to see like a 30-minute divergence in there, an hourly divergence in there. Uh, I'm most likely going to see one divergence play out for a dip, and then that is just violated and pushed through. So I think that's what I would pay attention to is the actual crossing of this MACD, because we could get two days of buying that gets that two-hour nice and curvy on the MACD, we see it get towards the center line, and then that thing just drops. So until all of this starts to happen, we have to, you know, take it with a grain of salt. We have to be a little bit patient. Right now, is this a good area to short? Probably not. You really want some kind of reaction to get that position. Um, or if you were going to short on the shorter time frames, you want to short at that five-day moving average almost every time. So if we start to take that five back, we can react to the 20. That would get us in this very important zone that we broke down from. And then maybe that two hours able to roll over. So if I pull up a two hour, you're going to see what I'm talking about. And we're opening up as of right now, just a little bit lower. So we're below the weekly expected move at this point. Um, so what I'm talking about is if this can just drift this way like that, that would be a solid lower high at that point. And we would get the MACD to curl down into negative territory. So we want to see that too. But you notice we're so far down here into negative territory that if we build up to that center line over time and that just rolls over, well, the second move might be there. So that's what I would pay attention to if we're going to head down. If we're going to head up, we're most likely not going to be rejected at this zone. I'm just going to say that most likely we will go above that zone. You're going to see a 30 minute pullback and then that 30 minute will cross back up into positive territory. Your account is blown up today. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. If it's blown up, work hard get it back you know like don't 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 get in the get it back mentality wait for your trade setups though 
Like that's a very important thing. So see, as we lose this low, what could we pay attention to? Well, actually, we could go into a very short time frame. I think we actually could go into a five minute and see if this wants to base out at any time today. So right now, we're not necessarily seeing it base out is the problem. All right, all right. Uh, and trust me, I'm hurting for some of these moves too. So it's not just you out there. You know, some people are hurting because of this move, but we're, we have to see what happens by end of day. We haven't even lost this level down here. Which I might reload the page here. Let me reload this page. There we go. All right, let's see. Let's see if that's any better. Not really. We're just going to be a little wonky today. That's okay. We have some simple stuff to pay attention to. 15 minute crossing up going positive. Five hour, five minute not able to cross over just yet. If the five minute crosses over, you should not be taking upside in my opinion, because that means you're breaking through this low. You're curling over on this MACD. We're down below the center line on the RSI. It just screams like bad things. But if we see buying up here, we're seeing that right now. We're buying up. We're getting back towards that weekly expected move. We'll have to see. But oh, starts to look a little worrisome. So how are we doing out there? Sean, good morning. Paracosm, good morning. Mojoma, seems like there has to be a bounce. I got smoked this week, man. Uh, just kept adding the same position, expecting a bounce. Yeah, see, that's what you, you want to get away from, stuff like that. You want to more be like, hey, okay, the first one didn't work out. Let me get out. Let me get back in. Let me look at something else. 15 minute, curled over, negative territory. I'm out. Okay, here, maybe I'm back in. At Once this crosses, I'm back in. So it's a good market if you were trying to go long at any point to be like, okay, this is not what a signal I want to see to go long, right? I don't want this crossing down. Okay, it crossed down. Let me just take out, get out of this position. Okay, we come down to the weekly expected move. Now we have that divergence. Maybe I'm back in. Maybe I didn't get shaken out by this. It comes up to this level here. Now you see double top, most likely on a five minute, and you know, hey, there's probably divergence here. So if I go look at a five minute, there's probably something there. Uh, actually, not really, just on the RSI. But if that's enough to convince you, hey, a pullback could be coming, maybe you made plenty out of this move, right? That's still a five point move. So maybe you made it out of this second move a little bit less because of the time on it. But then you see divergence on the RSI, you say a pullback could come and then I'll play that curling back up. So the fact that you didn't beat this high and go up to here told you we have potential to go lower. So that's very important because what are these? What are these highs? They're liquidity grabs. They're grabbing sellers. That's what they're doing. So we want to be in. We want to be out and then wait for that five minute to curl back up. Well, now you're like, hey, it could create that divergence. So if I'm going to get an entry here, I want that 15 minute to cross up and the five minute to go positive at this point. If I'm going to see downside, that's going to cross down and I'm going to be taking out this low and we might even target the lower daily expected move, which is where we were last night actually. So right now, all we have to do is watch this 15 minute and see if the technicals are actually going to be right here. Oh, the pho was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Oh, it was so good. It was nice and rainy outside, a little bit cool out. Good morning, Frank. But the good part here is at least everyone's here, you know, it's kind of scary when you see stuff like that. Accounts can get blown up. So but we didn't necessarily see that move at the open. But I think a lot of people are to the put side now. I think a lot of people are going to throw puts in there. And now we're seeing this start to drift up. So PCC looking a little high. 10 year dropping off, VIX dropping off. So some interesting stuff going on. I think the cues will be pretty important because that's the one that's actually breaking down a little bit. If we can get some kind of reaction here, that would be good. Let's see if the five minute cross on this telling you like, hey, probably don't be in this move right now. All right, five minute crossed over. So what does that mean? Well, we have to wait for confirmations for some upside. So that would tell me, hey, I need to be patient with this. I need to not be trading this just yet. I need to wait. 
So even if you got hurt by this move, it's okay. Just look for the next opportunity. It could be way closer than you think. You really tried to put fear in the market again last night with Israel and Iran by people. I mean, YouTubers. Yeah, I almost put out a video about it. I almost put out a video about it. But for that reason alone, I was like, let's just let the market do what the market's going to do. I'm not going to try to convince you one way or the other uh, by talking about that event. Uh, day to day charts. We don't really do buy or sell alerts. I mean, it's 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 seven bucks. I'm not going to tell you what to buy or sell for seven dollars a month. People do that for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that tell you I'm just overall showing you the signals in front of you and you got to become a good trader by taking courses and things like that. Um, but I'm not necessarily here to just tell you, hey, go buy this. Um, that's not what I'm here to do. But I try to be pretty open with like what I'm trading and things like that. Look around SMCI, the market shut down from 1140. Good morning, JS. Ooh, ooh, that is a ugly, ugly look there. Ugly look. The funniest thing I think is Bitcoin. Bitcoin actually going down and getting this double bottom and then rocketing up. So now, now Bitcoin sees a positivity going forward. I thought that was interesting. But nothing about this is screaming upside just yet. If anything, it's telling you test of the lows down here. Uh, I think Q's will be pretty telling. Really? Did they really? That's funny. Yeah, you are, you have your ear to the ground on that stuff, man. I like it. So it's pretty much telling you now, if we're going to create that divergence, we probably got to do it now. If we don't do it now, uh, sh shoot, this thing could head towards 418, right? That's what we would assume based on the market here. Based on the market makers, we would say, OK, this right here looks like a good target at this point, unless we see a structure that could convince us otherwise. Now, do we build all the way back up by end of day to inside the weekly expected move? I, I think that would be a very unlikely thing to happen at this point i think you're going to hold below that weekly expected move so as the spy gets weaker here you see it crossing over on the macd if that can if that can hold you have a good shot uh, i would just wait for a little bit more confirmation by breaking this low and then you can you know see about a play yeah in fact i am oh god what did you do what did you do I mean, you're you're trying to follow the signals. I mean, at this point, you just say, I got to cut the cord on this until I see some upside. Um, but you're coming into a point where that support can happen. That's why you just might want to take some expirations a little further out. It'll save you in the long run from anything like this. Because if you had longer expiration, sure, you might take a loss here, but you wouldn't be losing what no, no, you're probably down, what, 95 percent or something like you wouldn't. Ha that wouldn't happen to you. Um, if you have the longer expiration, you can get out, lose maybe on this move. It's a big move. So maybe you lose 50% or something like that. But that's much better than 100, right? That's half. Yeah, DJT, we're probably coming down into that zone. Let's see if we're coming down. Ooh, nope, it's popping up. All right, I want to see if this rolls over. I, th I think this has a good opportunity here to roll down throughout the day. But as you are going positive, it actually tells you, hey, I have opportunity to stay positive, right? If it builds down towards the center line and curls back up, we could see another strong move from DJT. I know that's wild. 95, yeah, I, I guessed it was about 95%. So uh, it just, if, if anything, if stuff like that happens to you, just even making it so it's a week out or two weeks out will really help you out. It really, really will. Now, you're not going to make tons and tons of money if you're right, right? Or you might make 50, 100% if a good move comes. But that's better than losing 95%. Rolling options is kind of rough. I, I much more prefer like getting out and waiting for a trade setup and then looking for the next opportunity. Okay, so 
even right now the 15 or the 30 minute here dipping down that's fine the five minute dipping down that's fine we could create divergence here but you have to say we gravitate towards those daily expected moves we saw some selling overnight if people pile on the puts here it's going to get interesting because what if we actually squeeze next week as those options expire today that would be very interesting but we'll have to see as of right now we're picking the direction it looks down but the spy hasn't broken through so that's the only problem here with this chart is the spy hasn't broken through now it's using the weekly as resistance but i'm not able to break through amazon actually falling down creating a five minute divergence right now uh but you, you got to take it with a grain of salt this is a dramatic drop so if you just move sideways you're probably going to see another one uh, what did Tesla do? Did Tesla break down again? Tesla actually holding up better than a lot of stocks. Isn't that weird? Definitely going longer in the future. No way to roll if your position has no value. And, that, and that's a good. Yeah, that's pretty much the point. It's like if you you're pretty much going to pay more. Right. So you might as well get out of a position when you see something roll over and then get into it and just choose longer dates because longer dates. It does. It does a lot for you. It keeps you from having to roll the position. It lets you scale into positions, right? So if you if you get a gap down and you see the divergence is forming down there and then you see that cross up, well, now I can scale into that position and at least get a better price on that. Maybe I put more into it this time to make that price really good. I see a reaction up. I make my you know break even or even 50%. And I say, whew, that was good trading because I didn't lose money, right? So hopefully that was helpful, Charles. IWM is up, so small caps are up. IWM up 0.43. So this one here had a bunch of stuff going on down here, and you see the divergence as of right now that could be confirming, getting us back into this very important zone. So that's very interesting. Spy actually going positive now. Hughes starting to see some buying up, so we'll have to see what happens from here. You will have to see what happens. We're not trying to guess anything, right? We're waiting for confirmations on all of this stuff, all of it. If I'm looking at the cues, I'm waiting for confirmation of this five minute. I'm not going to play around with this. But um, as it heads lower and we see some kind of bigger bounce here, well, we have that opportunity. Let's see if this is able to see some buying back, get into this zone cross up and go positive then you could break out of this and we actually could see an upward move uh by end of day right so by end of day you're going to be where where are you going to be at friday right around here so you have a lot of time for stuff to form we could do something like this we could do this we could do this we could also pop up to this level here curl back down and then go so it's just how much we can see some buying up right now will be very very important as we're about to see some buying back up. We're seeing it buy back up. So let's see if this divergence leads to anything. Hoping that NVIDIA holds. They have a great AI development that's recent. And I think NVIDIA could hold as of right now. I mean, if we go look at NVIDIA, the, the price action here, sure, it's below. But once again, you're getting towards that weekly expected move. We see buying back up. So if you wanted to, you even have five minute divergence right here. So if anything, this is telling you, hey, momentum here could be pretty good. If we switch to the upside, 15 minute here is telling you, hey, yeah, momentum can really shift. We can shift to a positive trend very quickly if we see some buying up from this area and then we just keep trickling up over time. So if things start, you're pretty much banking on de-escalation, though. That's why it's like over the weekend, it might just be fine to not take anything and look for the next short opportunity. It might be take nothing and see if we get something on the weekly side that tells us there's a bounce, right? Bouncing off the 20, and then you can say, okay, maybe this is it. Ba boom. Oh, good old. This is, looks like flagging with a sideways head and shoulders here, but you also had cup handle. Um, cup handle up here, maybe, but I think the third, no, it's probably gonna be like a two hour at this point, yeah. So like this, this is what I'm talking about. If you're patient for an opportunity, well, you have, you know, stuff like Boeing that's flagging. Okay, we're flagging out. So if we see that bouncer just hold a little bit more, 
what are we going to do? We're going to get close to that center line and cross over. So what do I want to pay attention to? Maybe just an hourly because that's probably right by negative or positive territory, negative territory, right, right in the center. So if that rolls over, you'd say this is a flag. I'm going to head lower. We kind of went over, uh, we kind of went over Micron, right? So this here, it is very over. It's coming down into a point where it could bounce, first of all. Now, the, the thing that you have to pay attention to with this is, is it forming anything to base out? And it's forming a small 15 minute divergence, but it's, it's not the strongest, right? It's not really towards shifting that trend around. So you do have potential here to get some kind of bounce that builds up to the center line and then cross back down. Boom, boom, and then you get a divergence a little closer. But this is an area where you can look at it. I would say that you can look for a 30 minute. Hasn't really created anything here. So you would say maybe a 30 minute bounce is likely. And then maybe we see that come down again. So that's what I'd really be looking at. Just know the direction right now for stocks is down. That trend has not changed, right? You pretty much on Micron, you have to get through this level in order to shift that trend around. So you could bounce all the way to here and then just drop down again. Because right now you're seeing the SPY is going positive here, man. Like the SPY 15 minute, were you paying attention to this? Yeah, look at that. That's crossing to the upside. So SPY is telling you as of this moment, the direction might be up from here uh, according to the momentum. So interesting, World War III pretty much starts and uh, we see some buying up. Now this is still flagging at this point, so we want to pay attention to any time this low is lost, you want to be very, very skeptical of the stock market. Bitcoin did something interesting overnight. Remember, we were paying attention to that lower level. Um, so Bitcoin, uh, remember, I like my two hours and I like my four hours. What happened on the two hour here? Well, we failed to cross down on the MACD. We, we rejected and created a double bottom here. And now we're seeing that reaction up. So my assessment was correct here a little bit for a bounce. Now we're seeing this four hour divergences start to play out and go positive. So this is a moment where, yeah, you could consolidate. But I would say this is a moment where if, if Bitcoin wants to, it can go really positive. So that would be very interesting with everything that's gone on um, in the last 24 hours. But you can see it right there, the double bottom happening. So uh, my buddy even texted me. He's like, dude, do I need to sell my Bitcoin? And I'm like, well, you know, right now you're seeing a bounce back up, some divergence down there getting rejected. So we're actually going. I was like, just just chill for a bit. Maybe see how it plays out over the next 24 hours. But you would say over the weekend, you want to pay close attention. Uh, because you can actually trade Bitcoin a little bit over the weekend, right? So if you're actually trading Bitcoin, you can trade it a bit over the weekend. And so if you do see some more positivity come in, well, that's fine. But you just want to be a little bit careful in these areas with what is going on overseas. Uh, SPY not necessarily getting that prolonged strength looks a little bit flaggy here at this point. So we need a break to the upside in order to actually um get bullish here sure we got the cross so if you wanted to take a chance on this i totally understand you have divergences you're by the weekly move i get it just know if we don't see much strength and this doesn't go positive even by end of day the next week we are going to get new weekly expected moves and that weekly expected move will be lower right so if this wanted to trickle up to the center line and cross down that's why it's like maybe we want to wait till monday to really take a play on this he is still dropping down. You know, we got some buying back up for a moment, uh, but that's starting to fade again. So as of right now, nothing, nothing on the queues telling you like, hey, I need to go long. I think you'd maybe want to wait before taking a trade today just to be like, OK, are the queues and the spy telling me to go long? I really want some. I want five reasons to take a trade today. I'm going to tell, tell you that I want five reasons, not three. Hey, there you go, Mike. <laughs> is, is this going to the sky? Uh, uh, it, it looks pretty good, right? That looks pretty good. So daily side, probably what we want to pay attention to now, seeing that react off of that level. So banks getting some good stuff going here. Um, and that's going to help out the spy a lot. Financials getting a bid here would help out the spy a lot. 
going forward. So if we're going to see another upward move, pay attention to the daily crossing, right? You only need a couple more days to cross that and then you might head up a little bit higher. So pay attention to that. But um, is it going to the moon? Maybe for a moment. And then I think that might be briefly ripped away. It has a triple divergence that could form if we see some upside here. But as a swing trader, you would be very, very happy with this move. It's right after earnings. It's not during or anything like that. You see the buying up. You get above a couple moving averages here and boom, there you go. Now we're seeing some upside that can continue. You're kind of in this move until it loses that five at this point, in my opinion. Binance drop. Yeah, Binance did drop Bitcoin yesterday. Sometimes that having event usually leads to some downside. Actually, I thought it was upside, but I, I think I looked back and most of the time I think it's like a, a month later. It actually is down. Gold, I can pay attention to throughout the day. This one's starting to fade. I pulled up the futures a little bit ago just to show how there is divergence here. But I, I just see all of this momentum here on the daily RSI just really starting to fall down. So once that crosses back down below that center line, we can see a big move down. If that wanted to hold above the center line for the RSI, just get some kind of quick pullback down to the 20. That would make sense. Remember yesterday I was talking about 215. I think 215 is a great area, 215 to 214 for gold to hold up if we see some kind of pullback, which right now you're not seeing that strength come in. So I would just pay attention to that going forward. It looks like gold could pull back. But then maybe it reacts off that 20 or this little trend that I got going here. Um, I think 214, 215 looks like a decent level. I have some puts on gold. I am praying. Hey, there you go. That's all right. By China, Russia, I gave Bitcoin to survive after the weekend. Remember, 90% of Bitcoin is owned by 1%. Okay, so I think what you're getting at here is those guys are trying to hold it up. Pretty much 1% of people are trying to hold it up right now. But we got to wait for anything to give us a reason to get into a trade. You have to be patient because this could flag out the rest of the day. We could end up lower into next week. You blow up your account today and then on Monday it makes the move and you're really frustrated. Don't let that happen to you. Know the five minute crossed over. So I'm out. OK, I'm out. Now I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently. Sure, I took a loss here, but if I'm patient and wait for this and take a longer out expiration, boom, I can see a reaction all the way back up to tw uh, 428. So 428 could be the area um, that I believe I was paying attention to. I thought it was 428. It was 428. Maybe it was on the spy. I think one of my levels got erased here. Oh, 438. We could see a big reaction next week. This has been bottled up for quite some time. So I actually think we could see a big reaction next week, uh, get something like 438 going and then reject from this level up here. I actually think that's possible. I know that's crazy, but I, I would say if we can get through this up here, well, then 438 looks pretty good and we could maybe reject from that. That's where the first big selling came in. That's why I'm paying attention to it. Uh, dollar actually not making a strong upward move. So it did move because of the news last night. Uh, but I was paying attention to this a little bit last night. And I want you to see how that's rolling over into negative territory on a two hour here, which is comparable to a 30 minute in the regular trading hours. So right now the dollar is telling you, hey, my direction is down. My trend is shifting down, which tells you a pullback could be coming. Volatility is telling you a similar thing. This is about to cross down. What if we see some extreme bullishness and get some kind of squeeze in today? That would be interesting. And then the other point to that is, what if it takes some time? This could go into next week. And that's why we want to manage our risk. OK, so right now, is that adding up to anything on the queues on the spy? Well, you know, that two hour divergence on the VIX, you have a bunch of divergences on the spy. You have a, you have a five minute divergence here on the queues. So when you see them at the same time, it can be powerful. It's just going into something very geopolitical over the weekend is a little bit sketchy. Uh, SLV, silver, uh, pretty much on this, I wanted to pay attention to downside just because Google looks like it's about to make a downside move. Um, up in this area, you can see the two hour getting close to uh, 
the the center line, which just tells me, oh, I'm consolidating. If I see a break up, it's going to be good. If I see a breakdown, it's going to be bad. So that would just tell me we built up a lot of liquidity in here and we could head down. What's the daily look like? Well, it looks like it might need to pull back before heading higher, right? It's still up here in this area. Now that can continue, especially if things escalate right overseas. We can see silver catch a bid here. Um, but as of right now, you'd say a retracement down to possibly this 20 uh, would be very, very good. And then maybe we see another move up in the future. Apple breaking down, Tesla breaking down. Tesla breaking down a little bit further here. Um, did anything make a big move? SMCI, probably one of the biggest moves, right? Netflix and SMCI looking. Ooh, ooh that is, uh, that's not looking pretty. You lose this, you're starting to go negative on the daily scale. Not looking pretty for SMCI up here. Use five minutes. So we want to see if there's ever a reason to take a trade here. Am I even going to trade this? Most likely not. Most likely not. Netflix, uh, it actually didn't have that bad of an earnings. The only thing they did was they're not going to give the subscriber anymore. So now that the five minutes turning back up like a V shape, not necessarily a flag at this point, we have to pay attention to any flagging on the five um, for today because you could get another drop here. This is kind of V shaped at this point. If this just keeps going, you can see that buyback. All right, guys, I'm going to say bye to the girls just real quick. I will be right back. Tell me for the end of the day, do we end up green or do we end up red? Green or red in the chat for the end of the day? I'll be right back saying bye to the girls. <laughs> orange <laughs> pink 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 big green day says matthew well if we want to hear if we want to see some green day we got to play some green day you know what i'm saying and this is the 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 i mean your overbought condition type thing right so still paying attention to the spy rolling over here it could be very very bad remember this is where it can escalate below these levels. That's why the Qs is dropping dramatically. It's below those levels. This divergence starting to not even look that pretty at this point, right? <laughs> like, sorry, I'm out of breath. And then my camera's not. But uh, this divergence is even not looking that pretty at this point. You're you're not really getting it close to the center line. So in, in order to see a, you'd have to get a big move today. 
don't get copyrighted. Well, you can't really get copyrighted. They just they immediately um split the they immediately split the four dollars I make for for doing YouTube um and give it to whoever published that whatever Green Day song. <laughs> if I would sing one. And we know Luke likes to sing. We know. Not gonna lie though, for a second there, I was like, oh, well, I put out that video and then if we would have crashed down last night, I was like, well, that video is worthless. Um, but pretty good as of now, so. I don't, okay, let me see. Like. Ooh, let's try subscriber only today. Let's see. I forgot. Like a thing. Wait, what does that do? So is it like just subscribers can comment? I like that better anyway. I want randos coming in here all the time, just asking me a question and demanding me to say stuff. Interesting. Cool. We are a very demanding group. <laughs> no, just sometimes people come in and they're just like, they're just like, hey, look at this, dude. Why won't you look at this? And I'm like, wow, yeah, that really makes me want to go look at your stuff. I was going to try it for a day. This sounds kind of fun. I love my subscribers, so. All right. Now, SMCI, I want free TA now. Well, that's pretty much what YouTube is, right? It's free TA, at least on my channel. I feel like I, I try to do a really good job of giving useful information. I feel like maybe I give a little too much away. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, what is it? SMCI, just look for, for a level on this. It, it's kind of difficult as you break through this level we're at right now. So on the daily, you want to flip to that because look at that thing. Now you can see a bounce still here. You're still within some stuff. So your next level to pay attention to, well, it's probably going to be this like 815 level. But if we start to bounce anywhere in this, it would make sense. If you just look in here, we have a wick up. We have a wick up where the price is right now. We have a wick up. We have another wick up. We had a slight down day and then boom, we gap higher and we start to go. So this area is very important. So like. I know we have this marked off, but really, if we were going to do this, we should do a zone, right? We should do a zone, maybe take the high of this candle and high of that candle since they go up. And then we'll do this and do something like that and say this zone is very important. That's kind of better. Remember, if, I, if I'm really paying attention to a stock, you're most likely going to see zones on it instead of just a line. Love to. Hey, wait, what are we talking about? Teacher assistant. Yeah. Love your channel. I honestly use this for crowd confirmation on market directions. Help me hear the other opinions. Hey, that's great. Yeah, that you can use it in multiple ways, right? Even if someone, it's like watching Jim Cramer. People, a lot of people like like you guys probably watch Jim Cramer to figure out what he tells you to buy, so they know what they're gonna sell in the next week, right? So it's like um, I did. I did. Uh, I don't do shorts anymore, but uh, short form content was where I was very very good. Um, but one of my short forms was just showing uh, a couple times or pretty much the last three times that, you know, um, what's his name? Oh, my God, I just blanked on his name. Jim Cramer, uh, the last three times that Jim Cramer was like, Nike is going to be a buy. And then I just like put the circus music behind it and showed you where he told you to buy. And it crashed like 25 percent over the next month. Thank you for the short analysis. Hey, you're welcome. I know it was kind of short, but I th I think this zone, you have a good likelihood to bounce from. Just so you know, Kevin, 
Uh, this zone here, you do have likelihood to bounce. If you're going to head lower, well, then you'd probably pay attention to another zone down below you, right? You'd pay attention to this level, this high, this uh, this low, because you do have a gap fill in there as well. So you can draw two zones. See if you get a bounce in this area that turns down, breaks through here. Well, you might head down towards 700. Um, as of right now, though, uh, you can probably pull up a, a little bit higher time frames, like a two hour or something like that. Look at this. It might form a divergence very, very soon. And then it could get some kind of rip your face off because a lot of people are going to be buying puts with that. With what happened last night, imagine the thinking of someone today and they see a rollover today and they go, oh, we could we could see another move like last night. Which we could. But is is it is it. It already bought back up from that level, right? So if I pull up, say, the futures here and I see this, well, what does it really look like to me? Uh, looks like a pullback. It doesn't look that bearish. It really doesn't. And if you go into a five minute on the futures here, you're holding up above uh, above the 200. Now you're in a positive trend. If this curls up, you're going to see a big move up. So same thing for the spy. Now it's holding up above these levels. Now the spy didn't pull back. That's interesting. But you would have to say the trend right now for the short, short time frame, the five minute looks pretty positive. We get another upward move here. True, JS. All platforms halted trading until 4 a.m. For what? I'm interested, Matthew. For what? Doesn't pre-market lows need to be retested during market hours? No. Not not one like this. Not one like this. It does not need to be tested bef before we actually head higher. No. This is a V-shape. I mean, it's pretty V-shape if you really look at it. If we just look at it on a different chart, like an hourly or something. Doesn't that look pretty V-shape? That doesn't look like a flag to go retest or anything. Now it can. I'm not saying it can't. I'd probably be pulling up some shorter time frames, 30 minute crosses over negative territory. That'd be bad. But as you look at the market itself during regular trading hours, which is something I more do, looks like we can see some kind of bounce. Now, SMCI is still breaking down at this level. Oh, 24 hour trading was halted. Momentum sideways right now might not trade today. Yeah, I think that's the that's the best answer. I think the best answer is, you know, just just kind of halt yourself for a moment. Now, if we wanted to test that during regular trading hours, I, I think, you know, at that point, if you head down to this level, I think at this point you would say during all that roughness and when most people aren't even trading, this thing was able to buy back up. Now, is this just people trying to buy this up to get out of positions. Well, this is about to roll over into negative territory. So a downward move could happen. We can come retest maybe the closing level. Um, but if that were to happen, I would really expect buyers to step in again. I think that would be uh, one of the last fake outs because you already bought back up from this move. That just means that these guys knew nothing. Like these guys, there was no reason for them buying here. That's a lot of no reason buying. Uh, I don't know if it's a, I mean, it's a, it's in a good zone, but if it starts to break through this zone, you can look out below cause you might head a little lower, come and fill this gap. It looks like it's targeting much lower prices. Like th there's nothing in here to go off of to say it's going to bounce at this point. Besides it's oversold. I'm up 140. SMCI is sinking so much because people are selling it. I that's that's the only reason I have. I'm sorry, Ramon. And it's also selling off dramatically because it went into negative territory right here, and then boom, negative territory is there. So now negative trend is solidified. Boom, that's where the big selling usually comes in. So I'd really, I think this will be telling. As well, the future is telling you a cross over here. I think you might be right in, in assessing there could be a test of the lows. Definitely could happen. I would just expect a divergence on the 30 minute, which which on the 30 minute, it's not the greatest thing in the world for the futures market. Uh, 
I didn't pull out. That's why I have a daughter. SMCI 802 next. I think um, if we break down lower than 802, I'd say 700 might be coming. Nice bear trend of the MACD. And I think, and we can look at the futures for the SPY and just see it's holding up better. We're seeing some financials. It's going positive. So a little bit less likely to curl over here, um, which is very interesting because we're seeing the, the Qs really suffer today. A lot of tech suffering today. Um, yields backing off, dollar catching a bid, VIX. Okay, VIX is gonna be important here too. Can we see another push higher? Mm, we definitely can right here, okay? So right now it looks like this 15 minute could roll up and go positive. What would that mean? Well, I wanna see is the SPY showing me it can roll down and go negative right now? You're seeing that. Now you're seeing it in the futures as well. So the opportunity is here at this point for this to roll over and the VIX to catch a bid here. So is that going to give us, you know, a test of this actual low or a lower or higher low? We'll have to find out. But as of right now, um, the Qs, at least the US 100, really telling you, hey, I want to I want to turn down. I'm up 200% now. Hey, man, <laughs> that's a that's a great, great trade. Congratulations. That's so awesome. They're flushing people for the afternoon rip. See, that's what I'm leaning towards. I don't think we go test this low. I think that is. That would be crazy to say we went down however much percent and then we built all the way back up. 2%. So we went like down 2%, then back up 2%, and we're going to go down 2% again. It's possible, uh, but I, I, I'm not leaning towards it. Closed out 260. Everyone give a little AR-15 a little, little, little clap in the chat. Nice trade. Nice trade. Yes, 5K. So there's a lot of put holders. And that's why I'm saying like I'm kind of that's why I put short squeeze in the title. I, I'm actually worried that maybe we don't squeeze today, but going on into next week, people hold those positions over the weekend and then boom, we just see some major buying up. But congratulations on that trade, little AR-15. Very, very good trade there. 100% afternoon rip, getting all the short squeeze at 2 p.m. I mean, if it's going to rip... I think it happens very soon. I mean, so the only thing that could happen from here is people start to pile on puts more and more as we head down, and then we see a big reaction at end of day. I'm more leaning towards us doing something like that, right? Staying up a little bit higher, maybe just grabbing liquidity at this point, grabbing buyers at this point. That's what I would say. Just because... We haven't seen the SPY really break through key levels. Now it could be doing that right now. So it's testing those levels right now. So maybe we want to go into some really short time frames here. Five minute is rolling over. So as of right now, you know, we still have a couple of minutes or a couple seconds left here. But as of right now, it's telling you, hey, the direction's down. A confirmation of a downward move, I think, is just a simple five minute close uh, below 498, 498. 50, I would say really confirms that, right? So how's some video looking? Let's go take a peek. Uh-oh, that's not good. NVIDIA still though, it, it's forming divergences, guys. I, I I still think that this push down even might end up being some kind of fake out. Now, I'm not saying that as a way to take a trade, right? I still wait for the setups to confirm at this point. Really have to wait for them to confirm at this point or else I can get everything ripped away. So one thing is Dow Jones breaking through this trend here, really trying to base out here and go positive. So Dow is telling you, hey, I'm going to go up from here or at least maybe try to shift that uh, trend around. The uh, SPY, you're just waiting for confirmation on this 30 minute and you can be a little bit confident and then you say, hey, that goes positive. Now I'm confident that this is going to start some kind of uptrend. Matthew says, congrats on the trade, little AR-15. Uh, 
I think they'll try to de-escalate as much as possible. Uh, one thing that did happen because of this was the 10-year pushed extremely lower. Where did it touch? Remember, like, this is so cool, though. Like, I love when stuff like this happens. We were talking about, hey, from this level, where would we want to retest? Well, we'd probably want to retest that 5 or 4.495, aka 5%, but I have 4.495 marked off. What do we do? We literally go touch that level and boom, we start to rock it back up. So TLT not able to curl fully up into positive territory, probably on some shorter time frames here. You see it trying to, but not able to really complete that. Now with TLT, I want to be very clear about this. You actually have some structure here. You have a cup and handle happening as of right now. So if we did break to the upside, it would make a little bit of sense. Uh, so right now, you just don't want this VIX to curl up. That would be more negativity coming in. And then we'll most likely set up some kind of emergence. But you do have uh, two-hour stuff all along here now. So you have a two-hour like this. Very, very steep. So if we see some buying up by end of day, uh, this thing can get vicious next week and really start to drop off. Like if things just de-escalate or something like that, or it turns out that the, uh, you know, what if something weird happens? Oh, this wasn't an Israeli attack. It was just a random explosion at a nuclear, like, you know. SMCI does not look pretty. You'd have to say, you know, trying to get any upside would be kind of scary here. So that's why I'm just like, you know, wait for the structure. All right, we broke through that zone. We curled over on a 30 minute, but now we're already oversold. So if we are going to see a bounce from SMCI, I would want it to be right now, um, not necessarily heading lower from here. That would not be the best. So what could be happening from here? Well, we could create some kind of head and shoulders with this level here. Maybe we see this level as important. We bounce up from here, right? So at this point, you would say, hey, I'm out of this move. I can pay attention to a 30 minute. If that wants to curl up, cross down into negative territory, I know the next down move is coming. Uh-oh, so the VIX and the daily side here. Thanks for keeping me on my toes. Look at that thing. So this is why I'm like, if we're going to see a squeeze, we need it to happen right now to the upside. Like if we're going to see some buying, we need it to happen now because you're about to confirm some very bad things. Now, what this would tell me is may, most likely we're going to see some kind of bounce and then we see it react off of the 20 and the 50 as they're touching and then see that just boom. I think that's very, very possible at this point. Yeah, and DD is pretty correct on that, right? We want to see the trade setups in front of ourselves, not try to get bullish or, or even too bearish at this point. We just look at the signals. If the spy is confirming those moves, okay. But if the spy is not, then we can't take a trade with this. We have to be a little bit patient for some kind of bounce maybe. Uh, so the five minute now rolling down 498.50. Okay, so once we break through this level, it looks like downside is the most likely scenario at this point. It is the most likely scenario at this point. Uh, but did we close below it? That's the question. We got to get that closing bar below it. Because if we don't close and then we magically go positive from here, all this liquidity, you're going to see a, a pretty big move up. And you do have a divergence on the five very, very close to going positive. So at this point, you would say, uh-oh, we need to close. I would say a firm close below this is what I would look for. Max Payne SMCI. Yeah, you can't really pay too. Okay, so that's that's kind of your, your confirmation. We're probably going to see some good downside here. We might even see daily expected move hit on this one. Well, you might not have that much downside. Let's figure out maybe a, an area we can pay attention to here. Maybe we're targeting a gap fill. Maybe we need to go actually test the 20 week moving average. Um, so I would pay attention to 495 and I would pay attention to on the daily side here, a bounce from 497. 497 looks pretty good here. Hello, Georgie. But yeah, you'd have to say it looks like downside is coming. What does the 15 minute look like? Uh oh, curling down. Now, if we're going to see a divergence keep up here, 
you know, just just be aware as this does break down that this could just squeeze at any moment. So have a stop in place at least for the day. OK, because if we just start to change the sentiment and go higher, a lot of people are going to be putting uh, some puts out there in the market. So pay attention to that going forward because, oh, SMCI is still breaking down further. OK, now we see maybe the next zone is what we need to pay attention to. We kind of cut through that like butter, which is very interesting because you have price action in here. So now you'd have to say, I'm probably going to target, you know, maybe a gap fill in the middle of this range here, 733. I think 733 looks pretty good. If you break through this zone, though, um, it's not looking pretty, right? We have not a lot to hold us up. So once you start to break through this zone, it's kind of all bets are off. Probably going down. Well, all bets to the upside might be off. Why are you thinking about downside? Because the S&P 500, I mean, the S&P telling you, hey, I kind of want to go down from here. Uh, you know, we flip that fast. We have to flip that fast. We're, we're traders, right? So all I'm paying attention to now, downside possible. Now, what's going to happen from here? That's the big question. Now you're forming a divergence at any point during this. That's why it's like, I'm probably not sure. I'm not shorting this. I'm not shorting this. Because I haven't seen a big buyback up, right? Shorting this move, a five-minute crossover is not a reason to take a trade. Five-minute crossing down into negative territory is not a reason to take a trade. Unless you see it, like, completely flagging for a very long time. Now, I, I think at that point, you really want to pay attention to 30 minutes rolling over and things like that. But the problem with the SPY right now, the 30 minutes already kind of rejecting now but it has any moment to turn back up. You see the wick coming in. So as of right now, you would say, hey, downside is possible. Where could we go? Find a target. 497 looks okay. But as of right now, you'd say, I just need to be careful in case any kind of buying comes because the momentum's dying out. So this, when I'm talking like this, I'm not talking to take a trade. I'm talking to see what I'm going to do over the next in the next day or two, what I'm going to pay attention to. Um, there's no reason to take a five minute trade down um, in this area at this point. It's a five minute chart. If you, I mean, I'm not bashing anyone for trading on a five minute chart, but I, I do not, you know, just trade because something crossed over on a five minute. That's not going to be a big enough move for me. You're trading like water. I just trademarked that. Hey, that's my thing. Look at me. I'm the captain. Oh, God. Is NVIDIA just ripping? Uh-oh. 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 Remember that divergence can form at any time, but now you're not seeing it on the RSI. Look at like you're breaking down. Now you're breaking down the head and shoulders as well. Um, I mean, if we just exclude this, it looks like, you know, head, left head, shoulder. So we'd expect a move down. Very interesting behavior. It, it it really looks ugly now. This looks really ugly. I'm trying to be open minded. I'm trying to be open minded. I'm really trying to be. But in a market like this, it's very difficult. So I'm going to trust. I really like my 30 minute charts, guys. You guys know how much I like my 30 minute charts. So like the stream for the 30 minute charts, because these are the ones that I like the most. We're seeing that curl down. Now, the five minute curling down. OK, we can create a divergence at any point with the five minute. We could just not create one. So I'm going to be just staring at my 30 minute, seeing if I can get any kind of confirmation up from this level. If I don't, then I know not to take a trade. I was thinking bounce today. Is that what you're saying? You were thinking of bounce today? And I mean, it's likely if we didn't get any news last night, we most likely got a bounce today. Tesla's up. What the hell? See, Tesla's up. There there are some things going on here. What the frick? All right, there you go. The VIX starting to curl up on this 15 minute. So let's see if that can cross and go positive. That could mean the next big downward push is here. So as of right now, the assessment of maybe testing the lows from last night is in play. So this here, we want to look at a 30 minute and take it with a grain of salt. 30 minute 
not the best to watch for the um, futures, but we can see a downward move can come. You sound bullish leaning. I I'm, I'm down for a bounce. I'm down for a bounce anytime in the next few days. But if things geopolitically escalate, that's perfectly fine. I'm not taking a trade. This awesome service. Hey, thank you for that, JS. Kiki's Steve, Mar up 2%. I'm not necessarily bullish. I'm saying a bounce could happen, and I don't want people to be surprised by that. Um, obviously, the downside looks very likely, right? It's very obvious that we're in a negative trend. Look at this. We're in a negative trend, curling over on the MACD. Keep it simple. Crosses down. Okay, we go and test these lows. I'm just more talking about if we come and test these lows, what happens? Well, we could double bottom from there. I'm just making people aware of that because that would mean like what these people just bought this up for no reason. So I, I just want you to be open to that. Yeah, Willow, someone did mention that. I know crazy that Netflix actually did sell off um, producing those kinds of numbers. But like I said, if you watched the video last night, you know why. Um, Netflix actually did not uh, perform well as of today. One key thing that kept them from really getting some positive action. God dang, SMCI. Man, imagine if you hold that, held that put. This is the most scariest kind of slow liquidation. Very, ooh, yeah, you're, you're pretty right on that too. And NVIDIA showing you that as well. Like just kind of trying to buy up, failing, giving you head and shoulders. Now we're getting a big bar down. I'm just telling you, we're not going to like be flip flopping on how we do things on this channel, right? That's the way to put it. We are flip floppers because we trade like water, but I'm not going to flip flop on how we do things on this channel. Um, if I see this push down, I'm most likely going to go test the low, right? When we cross down and go negative, we most likely will test the closing low, then test the wick then maybe make a new low. So what do I do? Oh, well, if this crosses down, I could target this area maybe next week. But I'm just saying, be open to this double bottoming. Be open to this even holding up at higher prices just because we've sold off for quite some time. Now, this here is telling you, hey, I'm going to go test that low. So at that point, you'd say maybe the SPY is lagging behind. Maybe this is one you can get into. Or maybe the SPY holds a higher low while the US 100 here goes down to Test the bottoms here. So you would say the direction for now is lower. What can we pay attention to on the cues for that um, as we're seeing that price action? Well, we can most likely pay attention to our, our daily expected move. Where are we at right now? We're at the daily expected move. So this is telling you all the divergence here. All this, this here is breaking to the downside. So all this liquidity, all this tightness in price is now exploding to the downside. And that's very worrisome because you do have the VIX that someone pointed out. VIX could cross on that that 50 could cross that 100 200 and uh it would be very very bad that's your crash signal now does that mean you can't bounce no you can still bounce you just want to see if this gets some kind of bounce does that roll back over if the volatility pulls back again right if this pulls back again you would just want to see is that testing the daily 200 and the 50 at this point, this support here is going to be very, very strong and where any bounce is going to lead into more selling at this point. So any bounce, like any pullback down to here, I would look for this to cross, get some kind of reaction down and then see that rip again. That's what I think um, would be very, very good. And the reason you wait for that as a trader is because you don't want to be shorting up here. You missed out on the move. I shorted during all this. Great, great stuff there. Now I missed out on this push here for the short on the big downside today. That's perfectly fine. I can wait for a pullback and be patient. I know that if this is going to be a bear market, that I'm going to see some kind of big reaction in the SPY. And then after that happens, we're going to see that ripped away. So pretty much I'm saying I'm not. there's no reason for me to get into this just yet. What I would really like to happen as the 20 crosses the 50, very, very bad. I really want to see if we can react up like this and then give me an opportunity to short in this area. Right now, this is not looking like a good spot for me to pile in a bunch of money on some shorts.
PSM up now 120 with 27 contracts. Damn, nice. Dude, you're killing it today. Let's go. Took a long trade today using your weekly moves from Patreon when the market tanked. That Patreon fee paid itself more than 30 times over. Weekly moves from Patreon. Long trade using your weekly moves from Patreon when the market tanked. That Patreon fee paid itself more than 30 times over. Hey, that's good. Hey, Patreon's cheap, man. Patreon's cheap. Even if you want to, you know, just support the channel and get those ranges for fun, you might actually find a trade setup that makes you a bunch of money. I know that uh, Luke came in here the other day and he was like, you know, I took the course. He took the course, $200 course. He said he made all of that back in one trade. And I was like, perfect. What's your opinion on um, American Airlines? Uh Let's see here. Well, you broke down a head and shoulders. Now you're creating maybe a bigger head and shoulders. So let's go into shorter time frames and see what's going to go on. Now, as you get above the 200, you have to be open to this going into, you know, more of an upward trend. Um, but we need to find out what things are looking like. So if this two hour rolls back down with rejection here, you're right around that 200. That would be something to pay attention to. Do I see weakness in this move? Eh, there could be another upward push. I think there could be another upward push. Now, that being said, what do you want to do in this scenario? Well, we're completing a cup kind of right where you want to, right in a place where we can grab a bunch of liquidity, grab liquidity, grab liquidity, right? So cup here. What if we get a handle head up? Look for that second push, though. You might get a divergence that leads to some kind of pullback. OK, so once I see that divergence up here, I wouldn't be taking upside for a little bit. I'd wait for my pullback and then take that upside. In my opinion, that's how I would do things. I don't know why I'm talking like that. That's how I would do things. As of right now, SPY looks OK. It's the cues that are just burning. We go to that daily expected move, daily expected move. Wouldn't fly them, but maybe invest. Yeah, according, uh, especially if you're flying anything with uh, Boeing. <laughs> oh my gosh, I we have a Boeing plant here, and uh, we <laughs> I talked to some Boeing mechanics, and they were just like, "Yeah, it's a shit show." <laughs> I actually know one of the guys that was like one of the top three guys at Boeing. He's my friend's dad. He was the one of the top three guys for years. I think he just moved to. I think he just went over to. Why are Spirit and Boeing connected now? I thought I heard something like that, but he, I think he's at Spirit now. Look at the look at the keys bounce at that daily expected move. It's perfect. It's as close to perfect as you're going to get in a crazy market like this. So Patreon, very, very useful um, because you get these type of things for each individual stock that we cover. So that's where it's very, very good. Do you believe in no singing? Who let me sing again? Thank you guys for liking the channel. Make sure to subscribe so you can chat in here. If you're here and you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Then you can chat with us. You can ask some questions. Tesla still positive. Apple breaking down. So let's go through some of these individual stocks. Okay, Apple. We were paying attention to a 15 minute on Apple. See, now you have flatness divergence, so that doesn't lead me to believe, you know, this is going to be a sustainable bounce, but still could come. Tesla. This one here, rejecting the cross, you have this. So once it's extended for quite some time, pull up a 30 minute, that was able to cross. Uh, now, if you wanted to head higher in Tesla, obviously, boom, use this as support, use the top of the zone, and then we head higher, get yourself a little boom, boom, boom going on. And uh, overall, you just want to see, can Tesla get back above? Well, let's see where that, let's see where these closing bars are. Right around here, 150, let's say 158. If you can close above 158, that would be pretty good. Um, so that just pay attention to that, with to that with Tesla. If Tesla wants to do some monkey business, go like this for a little while and then just drop over. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to build up. We're going to break down. We can look at 15-minute charts for that. Amazon, not showing us a lot. 
not showing us a lot here. Now, what we could see from this area here is some kind of big reaction to retest an important level, right? We could retest this little box in here. This would make a lot of sense to retest. So that's overall what I'm looking for. I'm looking for us to go retest something and then curl back down. That would give me an opportunity. NVIDIA, this thing flushing below the weekly expected move. Something crazy could happen here and something crazy already is. Head and shoulders up here might actually be playing out. So this is looking pretty ugly for NVIDIA. Now, if they wanted to make everyone bearish today, it's starting to make me very bearish today. I am trying my best to be open to both scenarios, but this is making me super bearish. Am I going to take a trade? No, there's no entry points for me just yet. AMD breaking down again, creating a divergence at this level, 150.71, right? 150.71, so we have to pay attention to that. Where are we getting to? Remember that zone? Remember that area we were talking about? We thought, you know, people probably thought it was crazy to come down to this point, but it's a good thing we were just looking at this area here because this is where we can actually see some support come in, right? Uh, resistance, resistance, we bounce, we uh, gap above it to then go higher. So you know this area we're touching right now for AMD is very, very important, but AMD looks ugly, guys. AMD looks very, very ugly. Um, not something that I will be taking a chance on. Something to look at, Meta. Meta creating a 30-minute divergence right here, maybe close to positive territory. So I'm just saying all of these things in case the bounce comes. I don't want people to get overly bearish today and then end up getting that ripped away by next week. I, I just really don't. Now, does that mean it has to go higher? No, it just means I don't have a good entry point. So why go short on even meta at this point? 30 minute oversold territory now, potential for some kind of divergence. So I would just be fighting against myself. What I wanna see is this build up, cross back down. 15 minute chart most likely gonna come in handy there. So Microsoft, this one was the one telling us there was weakness here. Remember, this is the one telling you there's weakness here. It breaks through this level and we just kind of don't stop. We end up 413, 414 all the way down towards 400 at this point. So 14 point move in three days. 14 point move in three days. Now, why was Microsoft so bad? Triple divergence, guys. Triple divergence is very, very strong. Only thing stronger and, and most likely scenario to see a trend reversal is a quadruple divergence on the daily scale is what you really want to pay attention to. So if we see buying from this area, which we very well could, I want you to pay attention to this. This is why I'm talking about I bounce. It's not because I don't think it can keep flushing. We are in crash territory. It's just I don't have an opportunity to take an entry yet. I would be banking on a crash. I don't want to bank on a crash as a trader. I want to pay attention to areas where we could bounce and then I could get a position. What is this? Well, what if we did a head and shoulders on the way down? What if we did this on the way down? We come up to this area and then we see that fade and we break through the big structure over here. Perfectly fine. But I have to be also open to what if this is false and we actually do something like this? I'm open to those scenarios. If I see this bounce up like this and I see the two hour cross back down, I'm gonna be taking a short, right? I'm gonna be taking a short, probably targeting this low. But until that happens, I'm just sitting on my hands, I'm chilling. I'm chilling because we're in an area where we can bounce. Google this one as well, breaking through structure at this point. This is one that you could have taken a trade on early on today, by the way. So this is one I probably should have showed very early on. Um, just the crossing over of the MACD. Now you're seeing lower prices, but I just wanted to show you this bar right here. Very, very strong bar. What you do once you start to break through the trend here, you know that the overall market looks like it wants to come down. Let's just draw those between the wicks. Okay, you can cross down there. If you wanted to be a little bit tighter, the trend looks a little bit better if you start to you know, ignore some of these um, these wicks in here and you kind of go like this. Then that, that just looks a little bit better to me if you ignore some of this down here and you say, boom, okay, that crossed. Okay, let me take a chance to the downside. 155, boom, sell at the low here. So there it pretty much goes to the low. Then you get out of that position. Now you have potential to head a little bit up or flag out for the day. If you flag out, you can look at the 15 minute. Does it get close to the center? Like all those things are very, very good. Netflix, see it's drawing back down. So that original bounce in Netflix not really adding up to anything at this point. But um, very, very cool what's happening in the market. Very, very interesting what's happening in the market as of right now. And, and this is one thing to note. The Qs are already at their daily expected move while the SPY isn't. 
So that tells you one thing, either the Qs are going to get some kind of bounce and the SPY is right to hold up at higher levels or the Qs is going to be right and flush and the SPY is wrong and it's going to have to go towards that daily expected move. So that's how I would see it at this point. Right now, you're kind of undoing all the divergences here. So take that with a take the divergence with a grain of salt here. We probably just delete this at this point and just say, hey, let's wait for structure. You need Netflix to bounce to 590. I don't see that happening at this point. If people see that as bearish news, it's bearish news, right? Now you're in an area where you could bounce, but that could take a week or two to play out. That really could, right? Look how long we built up liquidity here. So who's to say something like that doesn't happen over here before we even get a bounce or another teardown? That's why I'm really encouraging you guys I mean, especially as volatility creeps up, I give you a bear market strategy. You literally have it. And right now you're seeing volatility start to scale up or starting to get above 20. That that trading strategy is going to be very, very good if we start to go into a very bearish market here. But I think this is the first stage and we're going to see some kind of pullback um, from all of this downside. And then we'll see a rip. Then we'll start to see things really start to escalate. Um, don't think that the selling is over just because we get a bounce. I just want you to be open to it. But the crash scenario is here. That course down below, it, it literally will help you out so much if you can do that course because you'll you'll find out how to even, if you're good at it and you can just pay attention and really learn about the MACD and the RSI in that section and just really focus on it, you'll, you'll just be able to swing trade this thing down, honestly. You can pick a stock and just swing trade it. You could probably pick... NVIDIA, I could probably watch a 30 minute. I could probably say, okay, if we get a bounce here, what happens? What if we flag? What if we bounce? All right, so what if we flag? What if we bounce? Well, if we bounce, boom, does that go positive? That's the big question because if this just flags out like this and retests that area, this is going to get really up towards that center line, maybe even get past it, cross down negative territory, cross down negative territory, target the low, make a new low. Uh, if I have a weekly range next week and we do something like that very early on, that will be very, very telling. So now you can go down below, you can take that course and you can be like, okay, now I understand it perfectly. Now I understand it exactly. Spy up. And that's why um, spy is not necessarily up actually. So, you know, really just want to see if these 30 minute divergences add to anything here. Cues going towards that daily expected move. So that's all you would expect for today. All righty. Six nearing 19 and the 200. Yeah, 50s might cross that 200. That could happen right now. This this could be it. This is that's what happens in a crash. But am I going to take a short here? No, I'm a, I'm a diligent trader. I wait for my bounce. I am perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Chilling. I know that when volatility ramps up, that's where my skill really is. That's where I start to make good money and I don't even have to use that much money to make it. So I'm chilling. A bunch of profit at the over today. Going to wait for the 30 minute MACD now. Nice. Taking the contrarian play here and bought a May 1000 call in SMCI. Pray for me. I mean... That's freaking ballsy, and I love it. That's what I'll say. I hope you know what you're doing. That's what I would say. Because I'm not seeing anything that says it has to bounce. I'm just seeing support levels. So investment might be... Well, if you're taking all the way till end of May or early May. End of May or early May. Yeah, like a couple days ago, you made an awesome trade, the one you posted after the live. Exactly. It's like, if I'm patient, I'll find the good trades. Today, not seeing the good trades. 
Mark my words, Matthew, didn't you say we were heading higher at the end of the day? You didn't you say short squeeze by end of day? Let's see. Let's see. I'm down with that. Perfectly fine with me. That means there's my bounce. Not. I'm chilling. This was the bounce. Oh, so you're saying maybe the futures, this was the bounce. Then we need to kind of just move sideways and we head lower into next week. Very well could. It's just, you know, we're getting some wonky behavior here. Spy starting to climb back up. Oh, God. All you got to do is get some confirmation of positive territory. Right at your level in the ranges. Bet you a chicken. Things look, look bad until next week. Um, and yeah, next week we do get GDP and things like that. So what we'll to see. Are the futures up and dumping their shares throughout the day? It does seem like that's the that's the overall trend. <clears throat> the real question would be kind of like, you know, go find a smart money, dumb money chart and see if they're buying here. Who wants to go check that out for us? <laughs> HYG is positive. <laughs> HYG is positive today, guys. Uh, oh, God. It is a interesting time to be alive right now. I don't even think this is really catching a bid, really. I mean, 10-year, just buying right back up. I mean, if anything, this could make another move higher. So, dollar... Now, this one going negative trend. So would this tell you that actually the insider buying is happening? Like people are buying, like smart money might be buying at this level because the dollar's dropping off. So very interesting to see. That's why we would just be open to some kind of bounce, not necessarily banking on it or anything, anything like that. But it, it just looks like a bounce could come. The bounce is going to gum. I'm going to gum. Ooh, update on the housing. Uh, housing sector, at least, uh, looks like it might be double bottoming with some divergence down here. Uh, so I'd pay attention to that. Nail seeing a move upward as well. Uh, if we start to lose this level, not looking good. But if we can break to the upside here, break through this big high, I'd say break through this level, this 675 on the uh, HGX. It wouldn't look that bad. Nail. Nail's a good one. I like nail. Uh, now it's a three times, um, you know, bullish one. So ETF. So uh, I take that with a grain of salt. I don't uh, do the technicals on this. Kind of do technicals on HGX and then trade nail. That's something I did for a while. It's pretty fun. Look at the cues. Bouncing. I wonder if we... Did we expect it to bounce from here at all? Was there anything to tell us something here? Oh, yeah, there was. Look at that. What are your what are you trading zero DTE today or level center? I'm not trading anything today. Hell no. I'm sorry, Randy. I wish I wish I could help you out, but uh, I won't be trading anything until I see some confirmations. Yeah, we can look at Apple. Financials are up. Yeah, that's why the spy is probably holding up a little bit better. Apple breaking down to lower levels. The thing is, it's starting to get rid of some of these divergences on the RSI. So that's a little bit worrisome. So you'd mainly want to be like, am I coming into support at this point? You're really just losing a bunch of supports. Uh, it looks pretty ugly. I would really see maybe we see it further downside and then see what happens with earnings if we can get a good reaction. But um, I mean, pretty much you have double top up here and you're kind of committing to that at this point. So where could we head to if this was some kind of double top? Um, you'd probably say something like, 159 does that make sense it kind of has to make sense at this point as you're heading lower i don't really see any support there either nvidia bounced uh, we'll see about that one hold on let's go into a short time frame let's see what's going on here uh, I mean, it did bounce. You're you're right about that. It's bouncing. 
How far does it bounce? That's the problem. You're below the weekly expected move as well for this. We can look at daily expected moves. 825. Okay, so you're below the daily expected move as well. Look for rejection at 825. Ooh, we, we did kind of reject there, but uh, look for any kind of rejection at 825. Then after that, you're looking for possibly a rejection around 833 right in this area here. So if you want to see positivity, most likely even going on into next week, we probably will need to build back up to here by end of day. Um, but we'll just see what happens. Like I said, today's very chill for me. I can just sit and watch the fireworks. Now, if that news didn't happen yesterday, I think we would have went up today. But it did happen. So we have to go based on what's happening in front of us, not what we think is going to happen. So what would I like to see? 15 minute. I would like us to do this. And then cross down. That would give me some kind of entry. Some kind of entry. Boom. Curls down. Now the downside might be limited, so I most likely just play this low. But um, am I going to do that? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for for this bear market to fully be here at this point. Get some kind of solid bounce, see some divergence, see some stuff out of weekly ranges, and then catch the next drop. That's the overall plan here, guys. It's okay not to be in a trade. I closed my 185 percent, and now I'm watching too. Doesn't it feel good? Everyone else is freaking the out and we're just like yeah market do what market do and i wait for a signal to take a trade exactly roman and, and and roman's hit it on the head guys the reason that i'm also out of a trade not only because i'm not seeing trade setups like like good ones like very very good ones it's because i'm not seeing five reasons to take a trade while at the same time i'm seeing like you know a bunch of reasons not to take a trade over the weekend a bunch of reasons, right? Freaking hey, what if someone sets off a nuke over the weekend? What do you think's gonna happen? James Kittles, thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. Remember, if you want to chat with us, uh, we're trying out subscriber mode today for funsies. So give a sub here and then come in, ask some questions. We're in a weird time. So do I want to trade when things are weird? Probably not. You think Spy's got a bull flag? I don't see it, but I would say you're still tapering here. Like the fact that spy is about to curl up on this 15 minute would be a reason to take a trade. So I totally get it. Mara out of all stocks is holding me up. Yeah, Mara, that's one we talked about a couple days ago, actually saying, you know, it could react with Bitcoin and Bitcoin giving you that two hour double bottom. One minute zero DT. Oh God. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't. I don't do one minutes very often. Actually, probably at all. So usually, that's just for fun. Lottery puts would be better than going to a casino right now, dude. The thing is, are people bearish at the end of the day, or are they bullish? Maybe that's something we'll talk about over the weekend. Just seeing what is happening right now. You're seeing a pile on of puts. And most of these are going to be zero DTE. So if we see an upward move here, it could snap people in half. I just want to point that out. It could really snap back, even if it just snapped back to the open, right? Or to where we closed yesterday, fill this gap. People would be pretty freaking out, right? People would be like, oh, all these people who bought puts all in this area, all these people that pop puts in this area, all the people that bought puts in this area, uh, even the ones buying in this area, if they're still holding it, it all would be going either break even or negative. Yeah, and I think if you're looking for that opportunity, you know, you can do what hedge play I've been doing. Hey, I see the MACD on the volatility curl up on a two hour or a one hour. OK, let me just buy you know, some 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 UVXY calls. Why not just buy some UVXY calls or something like that? Um, the last time I did the UVXY calls, I think that was what, like a week ago? A week ago or something like that? It printed like 150% and in, in like, you know, I think I bought it at like 2 p.m. And then by, you know, 11 o'clock the next morning, it was worth like 180% or something. So I'm a bear until June. I think the rally back to all-time high will follow. That's not a bad assessment. It's just we're going to see bounces eventually. Not saying it has to happen right now. We can see that crash and stuff like that. But 
if I'm thinking there's going to be a bounce and maybe I even say, okay, maybe, you know, if I was someone who would take a trade today, not taking a trade today, just want to be very clear about that. Um, this right here, this starts to go up and confirm. We can see a strong move. So what would I want to do? I'd want to see that strong move. And then if I'm in any kind of bullish move here, all I do is when I see this happen, okay, now volatility is a little lower. Let me just grab a couple UVXY calls or something like that, just in case. And then what's going to happen? Well, you're going to see that move continue. You can get out of those UVXY calls pretty early on. You lose a little bit there, but you should be making more and more as this goes up. So we'll just have to see if there is a good... Um, if there's a good bounce here, good earnings, but crash. Uh, if you're talking about Netflix, does everyone know the reason for Netflix crashing? Just say no if, you, if you're if you interested and you want to know why it's really bad or just go watch my last YouTube videos. What kind of orders? Uh, tell me what you think about, oh, sh I can't see, Murr. Still hoping it might bounce back. No, okay, so more Pando, if you were um, interested, uh, Netflix actually had very good earnings. Like if we look at these numbers, they're actually pretty good, right? Beat by 16%, beat by 1.35%. Like coming in great, coming in great. Why did this go down then? It's because, yeah, there you go. So happy Friday's on to it. They won't be announcing these subscription numbers anymore. And that leads people to believe that their subscribers... Um, probably isn't growing or might even be going down and they don't want to give that info over time or maybe they're afraid that you know times are about to be tough and they're going to lose a bunch of subscribers so it, it really just looks like to me that at least from the headlines that seems to be the reasoning is um they're not going to give subscriber data anymore they are losing market share. I'm just telling, I always say this about any streaming company. They're all doing it in a terrible, terrible way. I think the only streaming streaming company that's doing it right is um is actually YouTube. I think YouTube's method is much, much better. Do you know why YouTube is much better? Because right now, when Mario the Super Mario Brothers movie came out, right? So Super Super Mario Brothers movie came out. I wanted to go see it in a theater and I did go see it in a theater. But then like a few weeks later, I wanted to watch it with my niece and nephew. All right. So right now I can go watch it for free on Netflix or something like that. Netflix or Hulu, right? One of the streaming platforms. What did YouTube do? YouTube got the rights a little bit earlier, allowed you to buy it for $15, rent it. I think it was rent it for 15, rent it for $11 or buy it for 20. I bought it for 20 bucks. They got 20 bucks out of me. And guess what? I can still use YouTube and go watch some free movies. But that's the problem with Netflix and Hulu is they're making all of these movies. They're getting the rights to all of these movies, but they're not charging anything more for them like a early release. If they would get the rights earlier, they could probably charge people and people would watch movies from their house. That would make it crash that hard. Yes, it means they're being shady. And uh, investors don't like not getting information. Good morning, Lucas. Tough week, eh? Uh, not really. We had to, the thing is, every week, if you want to consider a tough week, a tough week for me would be my risk management is going well, but my account is not growing rapidly. But you guys, if you've paid attention on this channel, I think I've made like 150% on my trades for the last few weeks, even with my risk management. So so uh, this right here, now I'm just chilling. I am McChillin. It's the new drink at McDonald's. It's called the McChillin. It's where we, it's where we wait for a bounce and then we get on into some short side because we're still seeing some signals here that the momentum's kind of dead. Okay, wait, check TLT. We can check TLT. This guy doesn't look bad in this area, honestly. The 10-year kind of maybe making a lower high. So that's what I'd pay attention to. The only thing scaring me with TLT, why we can see some upside in the 10-year, is because of this right here. This is a reaction to the war news, right? Coming down like this. 
So now we're building back up right where we were, which means now we're dependent on data again. This could mean we're still positive. We got a little, you know, we pulled back to this level. We can still go. Uh, TLT not necessarily breaking down dramatically, which is kind of interesting going forward. But um, it, it just looks like a time where you just want to wait for more structure across the board. What'd you say, Samuel? You can you talk? Could you talk more about ugly? Uh, yeah, uh, there's this ugly person. His name's Lucas. It, he's just my god. He needs to go to the gym. That guy is just looking busted lately. McChillin made with him. Killed this week. Well, well, if you did very, very well, well, were you killed this week or you killed it this week? I'm about to praise you. And then I don't want to like praise you while you're down. That'd be a bad feeling. Be a green hoodie to counter the red one, maybe for next week. The thing is, the only green sweatshirt I own is uh, is a Christmas one that says like Mary Pugmas or something. It's got a big pug on it. But. Yeah. So I and by the way, Kalani, I will tell you this. I could have been killed this week. I easily could have been killed this week. The thing is. Oh, ugly UVXY. UVXY is just the three times bullish leverage for the VIX. So if you see some kind of bounce and you want to and that rolls over into negative territory, you can play UVXY for a short period of time. But I was just saying that I could have gotten killed this week. My risk management really helped me out throughout the week. Really, really helped me out. Every trade seems to not want to work. And that's that's the sentiment is down. So technically, when you see downtrends like this, you can try to play the bounce, but you immediately want to flip the script, right? So uh, let's go 15 minute. So I, I would just, this is where trade like water really, really comes in, right? So... All right, we see the 15 minute, we build up towards the center line. Boom, we get a cross down on this bar here. Okay, I'm short. Where am I going short to? Maybe the weekly expected move. All right, that's a, you know, two and a half point move. Maybe I get in as it crosses right here, get a little bit more room, take a chance on it. Goes negative, we see that trickle down. Well, if you were to hold throughout this whole time, five about 502 all the way to 497.50. So, uh, but the thing is, if you're taking an upside play here, you would be like, OK, maybe a reversal happens. That didn't happen. My my risk management takes me out right here. Now I can say, all right, downside looks likely. Play the downside. So if you flip back and forth at moments of time like this, it'll be very, very good. But some people are just patient. Like, here's the thing. Usually a rip comes when you see signals like this, some kind of rip to the upside, some kind of dead cat bounce, bear bear market bounce, things like that. Bear market rallies can happen. But um this right now, you wouldn't consider bear market just yet. So we could get some kind of dead cap bounce in this area with these divergences. All right, that tells me, what if I just take a chance here? If it crosses below this low, I'm out. Uh, right now, though, because I've had to risk manage so much this week, really, and I haven't seen significant bounces, I think only one play worked out for me, and that was BITO. I sold my BITO, made a little bit there. But other than that, I got risk managed. So I think I'm pretty much breaking even for the week because one of my trades went well and the other trades I had to get risk managed out of my position. Pressing buy orders and a huge amount of sell orders for the SPX. And that's where we, the sentiment is still down. Um, PCC still growing at this point. Now we have to see if that crosses down that usually is actually a sign that we're going to get some kind of bounce. So if this is able to cross down soon, could see some kind of bounce. Oil, oil is one thing, right? If you're looking to just swing trade something, well, what if oil just pops right back up? This guy, oil was fishy overnight too. Big spike up, big spike down. Now you have double bottom in play. If we go into a shorter time frame, you're going to see divergences. Maybe an hour is a little bit tighter for us to see. Look at that. So you want to play. Look at oil right now. You want to you want to look for a play. This is a double bottom with divergence crossing up positive territory. So what do you want to do? Probably go look at USO curling up positive territory could be happening very, very soon. 
Now, most likely you'd see the four hour close to that center line. So it's just an opportunity to be like, okay, this is a good um, area to take something. If I wanted to see some upside for oil, boom, right there. This right here. Now, if oil escalates, that might tell you, uh-oh, things over the weekend might escalate, right? So I would just pay attention to these types of things because oil could be something you could have just swing trade all the way up, right? USO, call, boom. All right, beat down, call, boom. All right, beat down, center line, call, boom. So like, look at this one. This one here is great. Enter here, hold for the next month. Dit, 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 dit. Oil shot up. Well, oil will shoot up in a uh, war scenario. And Bitcoin will most likely drop down in a crash, guys. It is not a hedge like gold. It just it just isn't. Uh, uh, Q's here actually may be going to get a for uh, like an actual for real touch, an exact touch of the daily Make sure we're paying attention if that does break down further. If that breaks down further, not a good sign. Not a good sign. You'd want to build back up above that by the end of the day, or else it can get kind of ugly. All right, guys, I am going to take a short two-minute break and go make some coffee. Tell me your in opinion on the chat. Again, has your sentiment changed? Do you think that we are going to end up green by the end of the day? flat by the end of the day just give me green flat or red by the time i come back i will look at your guys responses but let's see if your guys sentiment changed at all in the last hour fuck it i'm saying green
Had to make a new pot of coffee. I'm being right back. It's about to be done. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to make coffee. We've been chugging it today. Kind of. Kind of. Now remember, if, if things are going to escalate, the volatility has to remain higher. We're not getting that confirmation of another move, even on a 15 minute yet. So. We're at a time where, yeah, we're at lower levels, but SPY really not wanting to break down very far. Financials probably keeping that thing up. Um, no real divergences down here, but. Now, are we down towards on the. Sky. Yeah, we're just pulling back. We'll see if that continues. Mm hmm. <laughs> Is it this one? What is, is it this giga cloud? <laughs> giga cloud. Uh two hour divergence forming here. I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a take a guess on this one and say if this divergence confirms we're going to take out this low 
we can go target this one down here. Two. Uh, normally, I only drink one. But uh, I noticed, weirdly enough, I noticed Thursday, Friday, I normally have two cups of coffee. Maybe that's just because it's the end of the week. But uh, GT GCT here, Giga Cloud Technology, giving you some divergence here. So what you want to pay attention to then, if you take the course, you'll know what I'm going to say. Yeah, see if this daily rolls over. You notice that it's close to negative territory. If that daily rolls over, test of the 200 looks very, very likely for the Giga Chad. I mean, Giga Cloud. Uh, what were you saying, John? John, I'll get to you. WDC, WDC. Let's do that one for a second. Western Digital. Um, no real divergence here, but you do have triple divergence on the RSI up at this level. So when this did confirm, you knew downside was very likely. Okay, see if that holds up at the 20. It didn't. Now it's breaking down. Uh, most likely, if we do not bounce from this level right here, we're going to head to that 50. And I'd say even if you do bounce, most likely you get a lower high and you head towards that 50-day moving average. But uh, retaking the 20 would be the thing that you want to happen. So if this two-hour can curl up and go positive, you have the opportunity for an upward move. But you can see the trend is now starting to really roll down. Um, and we could do some kind of cup and handling as we approach some support levels here. So you see the cup in here. What if we create that handle and then we break down to lower levels and go test that 50? That's what I'd say for WDC. Um, 30 minute here, you can pay attention to any divergences. Doesn't have any. If I was short on this though, I'd be thinking, hey, you know, maybe I want to take some profit here unless I have it for a long time out. If I have it for the next couple of months or something like that, I can hold it for a longer period of time. But you have to say at any point here, we could create some kind of handle and then pull back down. So on this MACD down here, I would just see if this is able to build up towards the center line and then see what happens from there. No divergences down here. DJ Trump. All right, Trump Media. This thing building back up, going positive. Remember, we were saying how this could remain positive. And that's, you know, really what's happening here for the 30 minute now you want to see is the two hour curling up yes it is it's getting close to the center line so now it's game time now it's game time we want to see if there's any weakness in here look for any five minute triple divergence or something like that i think another move happens here and then i think we start to pull back i think another upward move is possible and then we start to pull back but you have to say if you're cup and handling from the bearish side right trying to switch the trend the trend has changed here the trend has really changed so a pullback likely leads to uh, more upside. Remember to be careful with any upside trades, guys. We do have the, the um, even though it looks like we have a time where we could bounce, hey, we still are in a time where geopolitical stuff is taking over. If I held, I would have been a thousand percent. Is SMC I still, oh my God, why is this happening? I didn't think it would get to that zone today, but it skips pre-announcement for earnings. That's really going to worry people. That's really, that's why this is going down. It skips the pre-announcement for earnings. Interesting. Yo, what? Yeah, okay. If this type of stuff's happening, is the dollar actually heading down? The dollar's heading down with all this. I think we bounce. Not taking a trade, but I'm just telling you what I think. I mean, you got the VIX topping out. I think we I think we might bounce. Oh god. But you'd have to say that'd be catching a falling knife. I'm not saying trade that thing at all, but um, if you're a contrarian, you'd be like, yeah, um, that's probably an overreaction to something that's like barely news. Gold making another upward move. So if this curls up, positive territory, right? Two hour curls up, positive territory. We can see a big move here. Uh, maybe we're not going to break through anything with these divergences. So um, as it does keep climbing higher, what can we look for right now? Maybe a 30 minute divergence in the near price action. See something up in this area, but really I think the hourly might be cleaner here. You see a little divergence right there. Give you a quadruple. Remember quadruple is very, very strong. So if we get this to confirm, uh, you actually 
technically you have it right now. So if you get another one, wow, this could head up higher, test this high, and then just start to drop off. Mara is going higher. We expect Mara to go higher as Bitcoin was climbing. So Bitcoin climbs. Uh, we expect Mara to do the same. Mara is climbing at this area. Remember, it's getting towards that center line. What do we want to look out for? Probably since the hourly is curling towards the center line, any kind of divergence here. As you're running into the 200, if this divergence confirms, you want to say the upside will be limited. There's most likely a pullback or some kind of drop. This is still in a little bit of a flag here, guys. A little bit of a flag. Okay, so I would pay attention to that going forward throughout the day. <laughs> what will happen if I ran to attacks back? You're going to see the sentiment from last night continue. And you're probably going to see oil actually get that sustained bounce. And you're going to maybe even see gold go higher and Bitcoin will actually come down dramatically. I think uh, if we see things really start to escalate, Bitcoin could go to 50K really fast. A kid threw a rock. Yeah, uh, a little kid set off a firework and I ran is really what happened. No, I'm just kidding. Don't 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 really take that. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's going to be the straw that broke the camel's back soon. Earnings next week. That's right. We have to pay attention to earnings. Kind of a kind of an interesting move before earnings. We could see some good earnings. Maybe remember that we have had positive GDP, which means we are growing. So a lot of these companies, Netflix, showing you they're making profit. Um, the, the thing with TLT right now is the problem. Okay. The problem with TLT, which I'm just going to flip over to the spy real quick. That's dropping a little lower cues, starting to get past that daily expected move. So be cautious with that. Um, but TLT, the reason you could see it really bounce is the wartime stuff. So if you look in the, um, pre-market, technically pre post-market, um, you see the 10-year yield really drop off when it got that news. So that can very well happen again. And that's really what I want to pay attention to going forward because TLT actually could rip if we get some bad news. And that would, you know, make some sense here. Now, at this point, you have double top, but you want to take the technicals with a grain of salt because, you know, we could see these things escalate even further. If they escalate another step further... That would mean Iran and Russia are going to do what they said they were going to do. They were like, you, you attack Iran, we turn our nuclear plants into, um, instead of energy creation, it turns into bomb creation, and then it, it gets ugly. Um, so you don't want that to happen, and that does have potential here. So TLT, most likely from the reaction of that, will start to skyrocket upward because those yields will come down a war scenario and HYG is still up. And that's why I was kind of talking about, you know, the smart money. What are they doing right now? I mean, HYG is up. So, so you'd say smart money is uh, actually maybe catching some, some or buying some a little bit here. Doesn't mean you don't, doesn't mean you want to do that, but the Dow is starting to cross through its trend, most recent trends. So you'd expect some kind of buying up. If the Dow goes towards the center line, crosses back down, all right, maybe we just move sideways, cross back down, then it's then it's still over. So China so could see something given the Chinese economy is in a horrible fire sale. Very, very true. Um, just the fact that all this stuff can escalate is a good reason to just uh, kind of be like, I'm chilling. So I'm chilling. I will sit on the sideline, wait for the trade setups. I was saying we need to be sniffing more. Uh, yeah, I think when he's saying he he was a little bit more bearish, you know, than usual. I think it was pretty dead dead even, honestly, with Jerome Powell. But you know, he's not talking as positive anymore. He's not talking about inflation being under control. Remember, we pointed that out a couple months ago 
the, how that slight statement, just that little sentence in there while we were watching Jerome Powell live, and he just said, yeah, we don't feel like we're in the best control of inflation. It's not necessarily where we want it to be, but there's going to be some hiccups along the way. And people are like, oh, this is just a hiccup. That's what he convinced you. No, we, we knew it was more than a, more than a hiccup because he's literally saying we're not in control of inflation. That is that is a very, very bad thing. What's the other thing he said? Ah, some banks will fail. Remember that some banks will fail. And that's very true, Douglas. That very true could happen. But from a good trading perspective, that means we just stay out. I just stay out until they give me the bounce. Is Uber tanking? Let's go find out. Kaboom. Negative trend really taking over on a lot of these charts. This is crash scenario, guys. You're starting to hit points where crash is inevitable. Um, most likely, even if we get a bounce, you're going to crash down to lower levels at this point. Uber coming down into the gap fill. Very interesting to see what happens from here, but um, nothing really to go off of on a two hour. This is just curving down. What if this is completing some kind of cut by that gap fill? And then we get some kind of handle here and then we drop down to the 200. I think that is possible at this point for Uber, but not looking good going forward. It will be before earnings. Keep that in mind. So if we get some kind of bounce before earnings, 50-50 flip there, but we could just continue that trend. Moo, this guy. Still going, still going. So now the fact that you're dropping below this level, you're going to spread out these Bollinger Bands again. If you, if you keep dropping below here, this is pretty much your last line in the sand. So if you don't hold up at the 50 after that, uh, you're, you're going to fill this gap is the, is the very most likely scenario here. I could use a drink. Yeah. Uh, Palantir. Palantir, this guy breaking down for quite some time. You're coming down into the point we said to pay attention to. Remember 2029, we told you that a few days ago. Um, I believe it was on Monday when we looked at Palantir in the morning. We were just like, hey, yeah, 2029 looks pretty good. Is AMD crashing? Yeah. AMD looks ugly. Remember, this is when I was like, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to trade around this anymore just because it it's, looks too ugly. It's breaking through this level right here. We weren't able to buy back above it. So I'm not even really looking at this anymore. Uh, we might sub this out for Microsoft and Google now because it's just not looking pretty. I think most likely if we don't hold up in this zone right here, this is where I'd be paying attention to this little liquidity in here. It's a big zone, right? But if if we're not able to hold up there, I'm I'm really leaning towards like a 118, 125. Yeah, so at this point, because the direction was chosen, um, we can go to the pretty much go to the futures here and say, hey, if this crosses down, we can see negativity. I want you to look at the futures though. Does that look that bad right now compared to what we saw? No, it looks like buying and selling. You're getting a battle between bulls and bears right here. Who's going to win? Well, if you cross down and get to negative territory, that's a key thing. Get negative here. Well, then you're going to be crossing through this level right here, and most likely you will be testing these lows. If you're able to hold up from here, you're in positive territory as of right now, so we can see that bought back up. So right now, this V-shape, why I was leaning towards the bullish side is because that would mean that this means nothing. I mean, all of this meant nothing if we come back down to that area and retest it, honestly, because that's such a big move. So um, at this point, we'll be open to some kind of divergence. But does that actually break through this high then? We'll have to see because this easily could get some kind of little bounce like that and drop off. Bitcoin will dump after the halving, and that looks like something that could happen. Could we retest it? Yeah, could we? Could we get a could we get a time frame on your next attack, Iran? Could we just could you give us a schedule, maybe? Buy the rumor, sell the news on Bitcoin. Uh, well, technically, it's a it's just a news, so it would be buy the news, sell the fact. But yes, agreed, agreed. Now, Bitcoin's giving you a schedule. Bitcoin's saying, hey, hey, here's a good thing. Here's a good thing. Here's a good thing. Oh, I dropped. So it could be a buy the news, sell the fact type of thing. Uh, 
But Bitcoin, you guys know my my statement on Bitcoin. I won't be buying Bitcoin until it's 13K to 3K, somewhere in there. That's my accumulation zone. But that could take years to happen. I'm not saying that's going to happen overnight. I think if we see a dramatic drop, I'd be looking at 50K for Bitcoin. <laughs> Diddy Paracos. Unless Netflix participates. We'll see. Apple down the drain. I, it's breaking through a very key level there. So very well could be. Just know that, you know, eventually, eventually during all this selling, we're going to get a bounce and it's probably going to rip some bears apart exactly what the market's supposed to do in a scenario like this get some kind of big bounce and then fail so right when people get very very bearish which by the sentiment people are kind of freaking out even in our chat right is apple going to zero that's kind of what the sentiment seems like right now what if we just ripped your face off and went to 170 and then you were like oh look see this was just a false news thing and then i ran attacks and then it rips back down from 170 to a 150. Exactly. Yeah, we're not. That's what we're doing. That's why I'm not taking a trade. I have no reason to take a trade. The only trade that I would really maybe look at <clears throat> is actually oil. Oil double bottom hourly divergence down here, but starting to fail. So we'll have to see from there. Gold, another one, right? Two hour crosses up. Positive territory is there. So that's if this is able to cross, you could think about, you know, goil, ah, goil gold going higher but right now you know divergence down here not looking pretty thanks for liking by the way i'm seeing that heart button go nuts what did israel do in retaliation i believe they bombed um yeah i can't pronounce the cities guys Twenty three hours ago. So twenty four hours ago, Iran threatens to build a nuclear bomb, and then, you know, fourteen hours ago or fifteen hours ago, Israel actually actually doing some bombs there. So there was some kind of strike uh apparently near a nuclear place. Uh Isfahan. Is in the yeah. So Israel strikes Iran. Multiple explosions reported from Isfahan. Um, if it was clearly bullish or clearly bearish. At least I could make a play. But I have no idea now. Like the earnings were great, but it was a Netflix specific problem that's bringing down the stock. So what does that say about the underlying market? Are earnings going to be solid? I literally have no idea. Well, you could you could take it like this. This is how I'm trying to think about it. The the economy is still growing no matter how much debt we go into. So the only reason that stocks will most likely come down with earnings is I would think they're going to print good numbers across the board uh, overall. Now, maybe things that have problems in China don't produce well, right? Don't produce those good no numbers, Apple, Tesla. Um, but you would have to say they could have good earnings, right? Because a lot of things could have good earnings because the economy is still growing. So why wouldn't they have good earnings? And usually as inflation goes higher, sometimes your margins get a little fatter because they um, overprice, right? So they overprice to fight against inflation. So therefore they make a higher margin and then their numbers look inflated. So you'd say positive GDP, positive growth, no matter how much debt we go into and people will see positive numbers as good things. Stock go up. Now, the only thing that is bad in these scenarios is what if they do things like Netflix? What if they do things like Netflix? 
where Netflix told you, hey, I produced great numbers. Netflix told you I produce great numbers. Literally, these are fantastic numbers. But they also maybe their guidance was off, but also they're not going to show subscribers anymore, which means why are they worried about their subscriber base in the future? OK, why would they be withholding that information? It's not a good sign for investors. So that sells off. And I'm saying individual stocks could do that where they print these great numbers, but then give something else that is bad. Yeah, and we can go see if Elon's bought anything lately. You know, that's something fun we can do. Okay, so let's check this tick. Let's check if anyone's buying Tesla. All right, we have no insiders buying Tesla. Let's look at Apple. At least as of right now, I don't have anything buying anyone buying Apple, anyone buying Tesla. Nothing on Nvidia. Nothing there. Uh, now let's add the sell side and talk about some of these. Oh, but there's a lot of selling on Tesla. A lot of selling on Apple. Like the last big sell area or trade date was 411. Now it does take some days to file these, right? So even today, we in, even a few days ago, we'll have to wait and see on that. But Apple, some selling off there. AMD. A lot of selling there as far as uh, trade date 415. So earlier, earlier this week, earlier this week, a lot of people selling their AMD insiders. Look at Meta. Let's see what uh, Mr. Zucky Zuck is doing. Zuckerberg sold at the first day of April. Sold 15 million and more and more and more all throughout the month of March. He was selling a lot, a lot of stock, guys. That is very worrisome. No, it's not looking pretty. A lot of selling going on for the insiders still. Their new nicotine gum has been super popular. Hey, that's good. I have my nicotine. Keeps me in check better than smoking. But that's not looking pretty. Something we probably should be paying attention to is still the cues, seeing how they're reacting around this daily expected move. A rip your face off rally might just hurt people the most as more and more people pile on the puts here. So we'll have to see. All right. Well. All right, so we're at a point where we could get some kind of bounce. Let's kind of look through these for a little bit, right? Let's start off with the SPY. Can the SPY go lower? It very well could, but is it going lower as of right now? Not necessarily. Maybe if we go into a shorter time frame, like a five minute, what do we see? We see divergence. So we actually could get some kind of reaction up by the end of the day. Uh, be very cautious with this now because we do have stuff going on, maybe happening over the weekend, but as of right now, you have to say five minutes telling you, hey, I could get back into this zone by the end of the day. So that's something to pay attention to going forward. We could see some kind of push higher for the SPY. Now, the Q's different story, right? Now you have that little divergence down here. But is that going to lead to a big bounce or is that just going to flag out like this and then cross back down? So five minute flag out like this, cross back down. Now we have the opportunity if we can see some bounce in here. So I was leaning towards bear market, but war would most likely cause an actual just like crash. Just be very, very careful with that. But the Q is coming down into our daily expected moves. We'll talk about some stuff over the weekend, see if we can form anything. But as of right now, 
you'd have to say, you know, the direction is obviously down. This has not changed to positive. The five minute is very far away from positive territory still. So if you're going to want this to recover, you have to see a big move on the five minute and see that start to build back up over time. That's something telling there. Apple looks very ugly on these charts, right? We have a slight divergence here at this point, but it, it just looks ugly. Even a two hour just pointing straight down, getting oversold. So if we don't see bad news, we can get some bounces, but let's be very, very cautious. Um, and we're gonna look at volatility at the end of this video, but not much to go off of here. You're just losing support levels. Double top could be in play here. We could see downside for sure. Tesla, Tesla still just going into this zone. Moving sideways, okay, so what do we wanna pay attention to when moving sideways? Guess what, Tesla, getting up towards the center line. So, you know, if, if you're looking for some kind of play like daily, you could just keep looking for things like this. 15 minute, curls up to the center line, that crosses down, take a, few, take a week out play or something, and boom, that crosses down, you get some negativity. So Tesla looking very flaggy again, kind of like we did over here before that next drop. So just be open to Tesla dropping further. If we close at these levels, guys, on the spine and the cues, those ranges are gonna shift down. Just be very careful with that. And if they shift down and we see a bounce and it hits that weekly move to the upside, we know that uh, most likely we are going to see some downside for the rest of the week. So let's pay attention to that. If we hit the downside, we know, hey, we could see some upside. But if things just keep escalating with war, all those that stuff can be wiped out. So just be careful. Maybe a good time to not take a trade, which is exactly what I'm doing. The You can see Amazon, the 15 minute, very, very far away from positive territory at this moment. So what I'd like to see is some kind of, you know, flagging out, drop again, maybe in line with some some trend here. See if that can build up towards it, then drop one more time. Then I'd have a reason to really take a trade. Right now, I don't have a reason to take a trade. Uh, the NVIDIA here not really showing you much no divergence anything like that on the 15 minutes so that's something to pay attention to you're still pretty far away from positive territory so you notice that right here we tried to go positive failed so if you wanted an entry point for this look right there you could have been in this downside at 850 see if we hold up at this level you see the flagging happen you even tried to cross up which might have shaked you out you get back into this move oh get stopped out now i'm in the downside boom falls down so uh, this right here is outside of that. It was outside of that daily expected move. So pay attention to that over on Patreon. If you want those daily expected moves every single Friday, NVIDIA kind of getting a reaction below that. Could we see buying up? The probabilities are with you that NVIDIA kind of pops a little bit by end of day. AMD, different story. Now you're getting a divergence here. Uh, but this stock has been not very nice to us lately, right? It's just been selling and selling and selling. Every time we get up, even above that center line, we get some kind of breakdown and head lower. So until that changes, until we get into a positive trend and see, I would say, two curl ups, I won't be looking for upside here, really. I won't be looking for anything really here, even with this divergence, because AMD has been so weak. So be very cautious with AMD. It keeps breaking down. Meta, 15 minute. We were looking for some kind of divergence here. Well, you actually got it. You have a 15 minute on the RSI, not necessarily on the MACD at the same time. So just pay attention to that. Any kind of bounce here. Remember, if it gets up towards that center line, crosses down, negativity can be in store. All right, so meta on the 15 minute, not looking the prettiest. Is that towards a daily expected move? Yes, it is. It's right at it right now. This is where that daily expected move is. You can get the daily expected move over on Patreon down in the description. And if you want to learn about this stuff, guys, it's a it's a great time to get the course because this market's going to get a lot harder to trade. And I highly suggest you take that course. It literally is one of the cheapest on YouTube and you'll probably make your money back in one trade like Luke did, right? The, not me, the, the person in the chat named Luke took one trade after taking the course, made his money back from taking the course. So that's very, very cool. Microsoft, uh, this one here just looks ugly again, right? We're not breaking through any kind of trend, okay? So we're, we're in a negative trend, which means every single bounce, we're far away from the center line. We could see some kind of bounce. If that gets ripped away, you're going to see more downside or a test of these lows. So I would look for this to build up then I might have a reason to take a trade. But as of right now, no reason to take a trade. Remember, Microsoft had that triple divergence on the daily scale. Microsoft was telling us this pain was coming and we needed to listen. Google a little different, actually creating a higher low at this point, but moving sideways. So you have the worry that this is flagging. 
Okay, so we could actually head deeper um, for Google. I think that bounce might actually come somewhere around 153.87. I think that's a very good level to pay attention to. If we start to lose this, it, it gets kind of ugly. So be cautious with Google if we start to lose that for like close on the daily below that because unless we buy up the next day, it's going to be pretty bad. Now, Netflix, we gave you an area to pay attention to. Uh, 543, still some downside left for Netflix. We actually you know, gave this out in the YouTube video last night. So if you're paying attention to this, you know, hey, well, I can either get out of this position here, take some off the table and play the rest to this downward move, or I can just get out of all of it. This is great profit for the day. So don't be worried about that. But SMCI, we're going to go over this for a moment because we're cutting through a lot of key support. And this is a very worrisome sign. And as we go deeper and deeper negative, even on the 15 minute, look how much we'd have to build back to, you know, build back better for SMCI. Well, we'd have to go for a long time. We'd have to go back above, you know, this area here to actually go positive. So at this point, any kind of pullback, maybe it just since we're in between two zones, this is actually a good thing. Now this can be a sell zone. This can be a buy zone. So what if we buy to this level, sell, and then buy again and see a big reaction? This is where I'll more pay attention to some kind of bounce. But like I said, I'm waiting for the price action to show, show me a trade. I'm not trying to guess. I'm not taking any trades right now because nothing is showing me anything. If anything, it just showed me, hey, the shorts that I took earlier this week would have printed even more, right? I was short AMD um, early on. I think maybe that was last week, but I was short AMD. And um, if I would have held that for another week, that thing would have printed. So unlucky on that, but that's okay. We just look forward uh, to the next trade. Something kind of telling is uh, the fact that the 30 minute is about to cross into negative territory. And thank you so much for subscribing. Really appreciate you being here. Um, if this is able to cross, I'd be more convinced as that's not crossing while the uh, US 100 here in the futures is could possibly set up a higher low around that daily expected move. We could just get an ABC pattern up. Will that be ripped away next week? We'll have to pay attention. But weirdly enough, with this bad news, there is potential to base out here. I just want to put that out there. Uh, Bitcoin, this guy, I know a lot of people are going to be paying attention to it. Remember the two hour, if you're watching this last night, rejected the crossing right here, giving you a double bottom. Now we've crossed above it. Retest coming as of right now. Could we head higher? Yes, you can. You're in positive territory now. So what you want to see now is the four hour able to get into positive territory. You see the divergence down there. You see the divergence between the lows. You see the double bottom. Now, if this goes positive, we can see a big move. I would be paying attention to Bitcoin somewhere around 71,000. I think this area up here is going to be pretty important for it. Uh, most likely, we are going to see Bitcoin go to lower levels. The halving in the past has actually been a um, sell the fact kind of thing based on my research over the last few days. Now, the last thing I think we really need to look at is volatility. One thing about the dollar before we look at volatility the dollar not seeing a strong move. So even though the Qs are really selling off, a lot of selling off, the dollar looks like it's not really selling off that much here. So that's interesting. Four hour curls up, positive territory. We can see another big move from the dollar, see another big drop in the market. Let's go over the 10 year real quick. This thing heading lower. Remember that flight to safety could come in at any time, getting that to cross up on the four hour. But I, I would really want this daily to MACD to turn up now if we're going to see some kind of flight to safety. So just be cautious over the weekend. Now, as we get into volatility, yeah, we're seeing that drop off. That's a bunch of, you know, month out calls coming in. Uh, but we're seeing that drop off. What could happen? We get some kind of bounce. We come down to that 200 day moving average. Look at the 200 and the 50 just about to cross. So if you wanted to, you could hedge against the crash by just taking a small play on UBXY for the next month. If we're going to see a very dramatic crash, you're going to see this start to cross. We're going to maybe react off it or we're just going to go right now. And the reason I'm saying we could go right now is because the two hour, right, it's curling down. So you do have divergence here. That's why I'm leaning towards some kind of bounce. And then we crash later on, uh, maybe even just extend this for quite some time. Doesn't mean that the two hour has to hold up at this level here. The two hour can cross through. We can come fill this gap down by 13 and then scoot back up in the future. So uh, we'll be looking for that, but a reaction from here looks kind of likely at this point. And remember, we have a whole week in April um, where we could see buying back up. The SPY below its monthly, the Qs below its monthly. 
So if we see some buying back up next week, it actually would make some sense because we land in this zone, these yellow, this yellow line here, we land above that 68% of the time unless something crazy happens. This is where something crazy could happen. Something crazy is happening right now. So just be cautious with your trades over the weekend. I'm really pleading with you on that. <coughs> Rock solid entry for NVIDIA. There is, is no rock solid uh, entry for NVIDIA. I would say the rock solid NVIDIA is going to bounce dramatically is if this two hour confirms and we see no geopolitical bad news. Okay, so if this right here, two hour, you see it on the MACDNR side at the same time, if that can confirm, you're most likely going to cross through this um, this trend here as you go into positive territory, which tells me a strong move could come very, very soon. But just be careful. We have earnings and we have geopolitical stuff going on. So it's a time to be just a little bit cautious, uh, maybe hedge a little bit in case some kind of crash happens. But I really wanted to uh, thank you guys for coming out today. Really do appreciate it. I hope you guys were able to learn something today or able to get some good information. I think you guys for taking that course. Thank you guys for being a part of the Patreon and thank you for showing up to the live, liking and subscribing. You guys are always fantastic about that stuff. So I appreciate you guys coming with coming here with me today, talking about some stocks, watching some craziness. SMCI, let's take a peek at that. I got to look at it one more time. Wow, that's some downside. Look for this to hold up uh, right in this zone though. I think we have a chance for a bounce in this zone, something like 702. Remember, we said when we were up at this level, 702. All right, 702. So we can come down to that level at this point. It looks like a good area for some kind of bounce. And actually, I should pull that down just a little bit there. There we go. So more like 695, actually. But 700 looks like it's pretty good. Puts are printing. Puts are printing. Don't get too excited. Make sure to take profit. Puts only print if you take profit, right? Puts only print if you take profit. Not saying you have to, but now you have the opportunity. Hey, if you're expecting some kind of crash, why don't you make a little money and just play with house money on the way down, play with the market money. So thank you guys so much for showing up today. Really appreciate it. I wish you guys all the luck in the world trading as we move forward. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you on YouTube this weekend. Peace.